or your coupons. All right. Well, the Trojans come out in my favorite home uniform. The maroon helmets, of course, with jinx on the side and black letters, the maroon jerseys, and the white pants. Kind of going old school. Back to your days, Eric Fox. Meanwhile, for Edmund Santa Fe, all white uniforms, green numerals, and green helmets. Get the keys to the game. Brought to you by Riverside Ford of Tulsa. Let Riverside Ford be your pre-order, pre-order headquarters. Riverside is by your side. Coach, what do you got? Well, I think offensively they felt like they had too many mistakes, too many penalties that killed drives and momentum last week. Uh, I think you're going to see some big things out of Katie Jones in the running game. I also think you're going to see some interesting wrinkles with two different quarterbacks that will, I don't know necessarily they'll split time, but they'll both play integral roles to this uh, newfound offense for this season. Senior Cale Purvis will kick off right to left. He's one of the better kickers in the Oklahoma City area. And he booms this one out of the way. Elias Cooper has it at the one-yard line. Left to right, up the near hash, gets across the 20, and bang down at about the 23-yard line. So that's where we start. First and 10 at the 23-yard line for the Trojans. And Simeon Gilkey in a quarterback. The opening kick. And the first quarter sponsored by Advanced Orthopedics of Oklahoma. Quick access, quick answers, and quick appointments. 8A to 8P, seven days a week at Advanced Orthopedics of Oklahoma and team physicians of the Trojans. Dr. Shockley, Blake Shockley, former Trojan, is one of the team physicians. And his son, Cooper, getting the start tonight on the defensive side. We'll see him at receiver as well. Connor Thompson splits to the left. A.C. Christensen with that 6-2 frame, an inside receiver, slot receiver to the left. Jack McAnally and Kai Beatty at the fullbacks on the right side, and here's a direct snap to K.D. Jones, and he barrels up to the 28-yard line. That'll go from the 24 to the 28 for four. Yeah, Simeon lines up there at quarterback, and then he does a shift out to wide receiver, and K.D. is back there in the – Wildcat formation there, takes the direct snap, and uh, not a bad pickup for his first touch as a Trojan, four yards. Second and six from the 28-yard line near hash mark. Simeon Gilkey, the quarterback, sends Jones out of the backfield and now wide out to the left. Three receivers to the right, two to the left, and Gilkey a quick pass out to Jones. Gets a block, gets to the 30. Makes a man miss and gets the first down as he crosses the 35 to the 36-yard line. Hey, Rob, I'm seeing a pattern so far. Uh, two snaps and two touches by Caden Jones. Tackled by number 85, Jaden Battle. Gain of six. That'll be a gain of it's eight up to the 36-yard line. Season 106 for the Trojans this year. Santa Fe opened their doors in 1994. 14th meeting between these two schools. Jinx has won 12 of the 13 previous meetings. Shotgun snap to Gilkey. Short pass out. Screen pass to Christensen. 35-40. First down marker. Gets it at the 45. Bumped out of bounds. At about the 47, maybe the 48-yard line. Well, what I like what Coach uh, Calabrese is doing right now with this offense is getting the ball out of Gilkey's hands quickly. Getting him a quick, a good pre-snap read to see what the defense is doing. See how off they're playing the receivers and then getting the ball out of his hands quickly to make a good sharp throw and let the receivers do something with the ball as soon as they get it. Severe quarterback as well earlier in the game. A couple easy completions. Let him settle in. First down up to the 47-yard line. McAnally in motion. Here's Gilkey's going to run. He trips over one of the uh, linemen, Lucas Houston. He does cross the 50 down to the 49, a gain of three. You know, we talked about the offense being consistent, not making any mistakes, you know, uh, and so far every play that we've had has had positive yardage. Not trying to set us up for anything bad here, but, you know, no, so far it's what you want. Crisp, positive yards. You, you don't have to break every play to make a 20- or 30-yard run, but good positive yardage and no mistakes. Gilkey's first carry actually for four yards, so second and six just across the 50 at the Santa Fe 49-yard line. Berger, Bergen Kaiser is number one. They're tough defensive end. Pass out in the flat to Christensen. Catches it at the 45 and then dropped immediately. Double teamed and Franklin Sherrard, a sophomore on the tackle. That'll be a gain of nine and set up third and one. 
Dylan Lauer right there. Good to see him back in the lineup of the offensive line, really shoring up that position and uh, going against big Jason Wilson, one of their best pass rushers, and getting hooked, hooked up right there. But it's good to see DJ back in there in that role in the offensive line. So Gilkey's three for three passing here in the early going. Two of those to Christensen. Here's a third and one at the Santa Fe 44. He's under center. I formation, handoff straight ahead to KD Jones. He gets the first down, but we're going to have a hold apparently on the Trojans. That'll hurt since it's third down. And it looked as though Coach, he had, the, yeah, he had the first down by about a half a yard. We have holding. Yeah, uh, that's unfortunate because I think where they threw the threw the flag, it wouldn't have made any real difference there. I mean, there was some slanting movement in in the interior of that uh, defensive line. And this is a big, strong, physical defensive line, one of the most athletic and, and uh, physical that they'll play this year, uh, especially early in the season. But uh, just must have reached out there, lost our footing a little bit, and unfortunately that's going to come back. Ten-yard penalty, make it third and 11 from their own 46-yard line. Just starting, two minutes, 15 seconds in, no score. First possession of the game, Gilkey back to pass. He's flushed out, and down he goes. He was double-teamed. They couldn't control Bergen Kaiser, and then coming out of nowhere was Jason Wilson, who Coach Fox just talked about. Yeah, and Kaiser, obviously one of the best uh, players in the state as well. I think he's committed to OU, and... Um, you know, just uh, Simeon didn't really have much of a chance to look downfield. He had two guys in his lap in a hurry. So a loss of seven. Number 24, Jack Franklin to punt for Jinx. And Jack Franklin is back to punt. His first punt, he's a keeper on the soccer team and a nice high kick that floats and hits at the 30, grabbed at the 27-yard line, tackled from behind at the 36-yard line, by the Jinx Trojans, Brody Henderson, who was the long snapper on the play. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, had good momentum there, had good positive yardage, and uh, you got a you got a holding call that comes back and makes it really tough to pick up a first down right there. Long yardage situation to put Gilkey in for his first start. So 8.56 to go here in the first quarter. Here comes Santa Fe. Daniel Newton is their quarterback, number four. 6'1", 200-pound junior. And Santa Fe has the field position here at the 36-yard line, right to left near hash mark. Man in motion, empty backfield. Quarterback's going to run all the way, and he gets room. 40, 45, slides down at the 48-yard line. Sam Stone made sure he didn't get any further. Number 11, Looked like they're going to try to go hurry up. They're trying to get the chain set so they can get started on this next play. 15, Gain of 12 and a first down. Up to the 48-yard line. Here is uh, Demarius Robinson. He gets loose. That's shifty running back across the 50, down to near the 40-yard line and out of bounds. See, well, the market, it's another first down. And unfortunately, uh, two guys had him in the backfield but just didn't get him wrapped up. And again, these, these guys run the ball effectively. Big physical offensive line and, and some skilled backs, and they will put a lot of pressure on this run defense tonight. Gain of 15 on the play for his first carry. He ran for over 1,400 yards as a freshman and 17 touchdowns. Then last year, only played in four games due to injury. Newton, the quarterback, out of the shotgun. Handoff, Robinson, straight ahead, bounces outside, goes right, slips one tackle, slips another, 30, 25, 20, and caught and out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Elias Cooper might have saved seven right there. Yeah, Samaj Stanford came up again, a freshman, making a big start uh, in a varsity game here, first first game of the season. Uh, had a decent angle on him, just didn't quite get him down as he got the edge and picked up several more yards around the edge. Altogether, a 20-yard run down to the Jinx 17-yard line. No score, their first possession of the game. Newton goes upstairs and throws it short. And a little flare pass out in the flat near side intended for Kwasim Kareem. That is not their bread and butter. They're gonna they're they're about a sixty percent run team to a forty percent pass team, but they're going for a quick out right there after running the ball for some big gains early. Newton run for twelve, then Robinson runs a fifteen and twenty. Incomplete pass makes it second down and ten. Newton's gonna run down the middle all the way, gets to the fifteen, gummed up there. 
Toward progress will give him an extra yard to the 14. Cash Jacobson plugged the hole, and then others came up to make the stop. Rob, looks like they weren't quite set right there. Quite set. Uh, I was going to say, I think Cash Jacobson is going to be an important part of this defensive front. You know, a guy that didn't play last year, but a, a big body taking up space in there along with Hudson Ball. Third and seven. They throw it out in the flat to Robinson. He's got room. He gets tripped up, dives to the nine-yard line. He's going to be short, and we have an injured Trojan on the play. Now he gets up and is okay, and that's Grant Newor. But a pass to Robinson down to the nine, a gain of five, makes it fourth and two. Yeah, brought Sam Stone off the edge on the safety blitz, and then they just threw a little flare pass, and he didn't uh, break on it. So I don't know if he was supposed to go back if they flared in front of his face or if he was supposed to get some support right there, but they caught the defense in a good call. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Newton gets the snap, going to run all the way, and he's got a first down and more, and he's got six. Touchdown, Santa Fe. Touchdown, Edmund Santa Fe. Just some miscommunication, having some guys that are having a hard time getting lined up up front right now. Uh, this kind of led to some of the, I guess, apprehension that the, the defensive players have, have played with, just that uncertainty taking away the aggression, and uh, Edmund Santa Fe taking advantage of that had a shot at him just unable to wrap up and really the story of that drive is just missed tackles here is santa fe trying to go for two and they look to bergen kaiser to throw a pass and it is incomplete so the two-point conversion no good 652 to go in the first quarter it's edmund santa fe six and the trojans nothing we're back with the kickoff in a moment on 1170 the blitz more caring, more personal, more convenient. Tulsa ER and Hospital brings 24-7 personalized yes. emergency care to Green Country, providing patients with short wait times and the best care possible. Tulsa ER and Hospital, how emergency care should be. Trojan fans, Hudson. be able to hear the audio and watch it on uh, Trojan TV. So that's awesome. Mason Prince is our producer of Trojan TV. So a nice drive after the Trojans at third and one, got a first down, but a holding penalty made them punt. And Santa Fe responds with a 64-yard drive, and they do it in seven plays and get a nine-yard TD run from Daniel Newton. That was really a problem, Coach, with this team a year ago was stopping the quarterback run. And he's a very talented quarterback. He's a very athletic uh, young man. And, uh, again, they have a big physical uh, up front. They are, do not anticipate trying to beat you down the field, throwing the ball. So uh, Trojans better get ready to play some run defense tonight. Here's the kickoff. Again, it'll be Cooper fielding it deep at the one-yard line. Bobbles it, picks it up to the 5, 10, up the numbers to the 20, 25, 30. And finally caught by Ronnell Slaughter, one of their starting defensive backs. Good return by Elias Cooper from the 1 up to the 29 for 28 yards. Well, when uh, the Trojans score first, they have dominated over the years. When opponents have scored first, the Trojans have still been able to come back in the last 34 years and go 70 and 39. So no panic here with the Trojans, but they trail 6 to nothing early going first quarter. And they start at their 29-yard line going left to right. That scoring update brought to you by Tzatziki's Mediterranean Cafe. Back to school season. Be sure and have a school fundraiser with Tzatziki's. You can do that. 
by calling them and setting them up. Here's a running play. Oh, he almost broke it at the 40-yard line. And that'll be K.D. Jones again. It'll be a gain of 11 and a first down. K.D. Jones got the handoff there from uh, Owen Jones. Um, so Owen Jones also another uh, move in from uh, – from Broken Arrow, and his dad is helping on the ninth grade football team as well as he's the first girls wrestling coach in Jinx history. Nice. New quarterback for the Trojans, number 12. Well, Owen Jones and KD. Appearance, yeah. Owen Jones and KD Jones, two dads that are uh, pretty well known in the athletic circles. Owen passes out complete in the flat. I believe that's Katie Jones, the 40. He had nothing. He had nobody, no blockers, three defenders, and he was still able to maneuver his way for about five yards. Kind of a slip screen right there, get it out quick to KD, and then uh, he's got some linemen that are trying to make their way out into the flat, and uh, KD was able to wind his way through some traffic and pick up some yardage when it looked like he was hemmed up for about a two-yard loss. Two catches for Christensen, two catches for K.D. Jones. Connor Thompson splits to the right, second and five at the 45. Christensen inside receiver to the right. Handoff Jones, he's tackled in the backfield here and maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Nope, they're going to give him a yard loss back to the 46-yard line. Yeah, there's Kaiser again making his presence known. This is a, a very good defensive player. He was problematic for the Trojans last year. It'll be interesting to talk about, uh, you know, the heat and the temperature. He's also their slot back guy um, so on, on offense. So it'll be interesting to see how he holds up as he is rarely comes off the field. Trojan football brought to you by Arvest Bank. I remember, they donate a dollar for every point scored this year and donate it to the Trimble Strong Foundation. Third and six at the 46. Five and a half minutes to go. First quarter. Trojans down six to nothing. This pass batted in the air and intercepted at the 50-yard line. And Santa Fe's into Jinx territory at the 42-yard line. Somebody batted it in the air, and Will Shoemaker, their top linebacker, picked it off. And the senior gets from the 50 down to the Jinx 42. Yeah, Coach Glenn, the offensive line coach over there, talking to a couple guys just – had too many guys in the face of, of Owen Jones, and they were able to get big hands up and deflect that up in the air. Owen really didn't have a passing lane to get that through. To the Jinx 42-yard line, 5-18 to go first quarter. Santa Fe with their second possession, leading 6 to nothing, And Daniel Newton at quarterback. Right to left near hash mark. Shotgun snap, back to his chest, winds and fires, throws the fade, got a man open, and he reaches up and can't haul it in. Cooper Shockley on the coverage. Intended for Malachi Davis down at the 15-yard line. Again, uh, just a, a, a fade route, and, and Shockley didn't get his hips around and see the ball. If he would have got his hips around, he may have been able to have a chance to pick that one off. But... Uh, Officials are taking an official timeout to reset, the, re spot the ball. Second and ten for Edmond Santa Fe. One of three passing for Newton, but he's dangerous running the ball, and he runs here. He gets some steam inside the 40 down to the 35-yard line. They can't quite grab him at the line of scrimmage at the initial contact. Jet Kalmus, the point of, uh, the point of contact, but... At least he slowed him down enough to where he prevented him from going any further than seven yards. Third and three. Newton hands it off. Robinson's open. 30, 25, 20, and he slips down. But it's a first down for the Wolves. Yeah, if he doesn't slip down, he scores right there. It looks like he tried to cut off his inside foot instead of his outside foot, or that would have been some more points on the board for the Wolves. 15-yard gain, and they're in a hurry. First down at the Jinx 20-yard line. Newton. Hand off to Robinson again over left guard. And a flag down. This offensive line is big for the Wolves. Iosa is 6'3", 200. He's already committed to OU. Mer Merrick Barnett at 280. Brendan Prather is another guy, one of the co-captains. He looks like he's about that big. And a hold here against the Wolves. And this is the only thing that uh, has even slowed this Wolf offense down so far. 
That's their first penalty of the game. Makes it first and 20 from the Jinx 30. After a turnover. First and 20 for Edmond Santa Fe. Trojans went 10 and 3 last year, but this uh, this game mirrors what's happened last year. Here's a running play to the right. He gets loose to the 20, to the 15, and near the 10 yard line on first and 20. Joseph Hinton, their number two running back. They're excited about him. I can see why they needed 20, and they got 19. Wow. Second and one from the Jinx 11. And here's a running play, and into the end zone is Robinson, but a flag is down. There is a flag on the well, right now there's just huge running lanes up front, and Iosa, uh, another guy that's committed to OU, um, showing why that he's gained a lot of attention by a lot of people, including the Sooners. But uh, this time the play was away from him, but there's just huge running lanes right now, and, and these running backs from Edmond Santa Fe are just – Headed straight up the Holding up the gut, um, and there's just nothing slowing them down right now. But again, fortunately, a holding penalty helps this Trojan Second defense out some. Trojans have Brody Henderson in as a linebacker, defensive end. They have a five-man front. They hand off. Robinson gets belted down at the 20-yard line. There's somebody making a big play, and it's senior Jet Kalmus. Interesting they switched up that front, brought an extra defensive lineman so that Kalmus could kind of run through there, and, and Kalmus filled that gap in a hurry and with great vigor. Get this defense going. Maybe that's a little bit of a spark that they needed there provided by Jet Kalmus because at the moment they're getting pushed around up front. They really are, and... Jinx doesn't have that much size up front. Santa Fe does. That's going to be a concern for this team. Swing pass. Caught at the 20. Gets by a defender and down near the first down marker. He'll be close. They're going to mark it right at the 10-yard line, and that's probably going to give them a first and goal. Yeah, again, we have somebody at the point of attack right at the catch and just poor technique, poor tackling. And uh, he's able to break past that first man and get to about a fourth and one. They're going to mark it fourth and one. So a gain of nine on the last play and a timeout called by Edmund Santa Fe. Trojan defense really looking for a A.J. Brown kind of guy, a, a Q. Yes. Overton kind of guy up front and just don't have that developed yet. And looking for another nose guard, or another defensive lineman to have a big – impact up front to give those linebackers a chance to run through. Like you said, they're definitely undersized tonight and maybe undersized most of the season. Right. So they're going to have to use that athleticism of uh, Hunter Ball and some others to try to combat that. These two schools met each other in the finals twice in 2003 at OU. Jinx came from behind, had an Andrew Brewer to Marcus Pugh pass in the uh, second half, Stephen Woodward added an extra uh, field goal in the fourth quarter, and Jinx won that game 17-10. to 10. Reggie Smith, who went on to play for the 49ers, was on that team. Then in 2020, Santa Fe returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown, but Jinx didn't let that bother him. They came back for a big win in the 2020 state championship game at Edmond to win their 18th state or win their... Um, 17th state championship and then in 21 beat Union to win their 18th state championship trailing Ada by just one. Ada's won 19 titles. None I don't think since maybe the 80s. It's been a while hasn't it for the Ada Cougars. I, 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 think, they maybe won the 90s. A, I think they won some of the 90s but uh... well let's see if Jinx can win this play. Fourth and one at the Jinx 11 to our left already down 6 nothing. Newton awaits the snap. Gets it. Handoff. Straight ahead. Powers his way for the first down is Hinton. And uh, that's a big time run. Rob, these Santa Fe running backs are just churning those legs and all the momentum's going forward. So there at the end from Josh Iosa, you know, 300 pounds, never heard. See, there looked like they maybe had a shot at him to stop him short of the line to gain. But again, yeah, the legs keep churning and all they needed was about half a yard. First and goal from the six. Handoff straight ahead. 
He's hit in the backfield, and Robinson still able to dodge a tackler and dive to the four for a gain of two, but a flag is down. Uh, and this is kind of a late coming flag. I, I'm going to say I think the Trojans benefit, and I don't know that this is a great call. If they call holding here, Jet Kalmus had come into the backfield and kind of made a play at him and missed him uh, on the blitz. And then a lineman from Santa Fe kind of pushed Jet in the back after the play had already gone way past him. So we, I think, are fortunate to get that call. There'd be lots of times that would not necessarily be called. But we'll take it. My check. I do not see Sam Stone out there. And he had seven takeaways on the team a year ago. He's, he's right down here coming off the edge. All right. Second down and a big play in the backfield. There's Hudson Ball making the play. Jack McAnally assisted as well. And so the Trojans finally stopped Robinson in the backfield, and that'll be a loss of a yard. But we saw these guys game tonight. It'll be it'll be many times throughout the season, but they need him to show up and really anchor that defensive line. Need him to be consistent, a consistent disruptive force up there. Cale Purvis is a guy that can kick a field goal from 35 yards, but they'll throw it. And is it caught? Cooper knocks down the receiver at the point of the catch, and it is grabbed by Kwasim Kareem at the 11 yard line. To number 10, Kwasim Kareem. They're in field goal range for sure. I saw their kicker kicking it in pregame from this distance, but it's third down here, so I imagine they're thinking the end zone. Ah, thank you. That was second and goal. Now it's third and goal from the Jinx 13-yard line. Running play. He's got room to the 10, to the 5. Robinson dives into the end zone. He sidestepped two tacklers and gets in. You can see why Demaris Robinson is an All-State candidate as a junior as he just did that on his own from 13 yards out. Yeah, I really should have tackled him about the seven or eight yard line and then again probably the third three yard line and just eluded us and they're going back to their swinging gate formation. Now Bergen is going to hold and they're going to run in Purvis. Also Coach Fox, just too easy to get around the edge there. No edge to that Jinx defense. Would agree. Here's the extra point kick and it's good. Purvis's kick is good. Well, Santa Fe came up here a few years ago and beat Jinx. Jinx. And they are in front with a minute 34 to go. Opening quarter, 13 to nothing. More athletes. They've had two drives and two scores. Friends and neighbors. And we make actually. Jinx. Go ahead, Don. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, Jinx has not been able to do anything consistently in offense yet here in the opening quarter. Well, and, and I was going to say the only thing that has consistently stopped or even slowed, I shouldn't say stopped, has even slowed the momentum of the Santa Fe offense is their own holding penalties. Five carries, 48 yards, and a touchdown for Robinson. Newton, the quarterback, three carries for 24 yards. So they have 90, six yards rushing already here in the first quarter. So 13 nothing Trojans. Or 13 nothing Santa Fe, excuse me. Keith Riggs in his sixth season as the head coach, 52 and 12 overall, 23 and five here at Allen Trimble Stadium. Trojans lost their season opener here in 2017 at home to Owasso. That was Bill Blankenship's first game as head coach at Owasso in Allen Trimble's final season. Also won big 48 10. Here's the kickoff. This one will go out of bounds, and the Trojans will take over first and 10, their best field position at the 35-yard line. So two possessions so far. The first one started with Simeon Gilkey. The second one went with Owen Jones. We'll see who comes out for quarterback. Um, again, Coach Calabrese and Coach Riggs both said they didn't necessarily feel like they had to split series specifically, but wanted to see what the rhythm of the game might dictate and might present as opportunities, and so... It looks like Gilkey is getting the call for this start of this series.
Rob, what's the atmosphere? What's the mood? What's what's the vibe down there? Ask you guys, you know, if things continue along this path, do we just rip up this new turf at halftime and start <laughs> over, or you guys want to wait a little bit longer on that? I would I would say stunned silence is a good way to describe yeah. things down here on the sidelines and in the stands. First and ten at the 35-yard line. See if we can get something going offensively. Quick pass from Gilkey out to AC. Gets a block from Thompson, but gets hit and knocked out of bounds after a gain of five up to the actually gain of four the market at the 39-yard line. AC's a big, tall target. He goes up and gets that ball. The ball hangs a little bit. If it gets there quicker, he might have a little bit more of an opportunity to do something with it downfield. But uh, he does a good job of getting some positive yards there. Again, that's that's the key is don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't right. make mistakes that cost you. Like the interception earlier cost them some points. Second and six at the 39. Jinx trailing. 13 to nothing, 51 seconds left opening quarter. Timeout. And the Trojans have called a timeout here. No, that was actually Santa or Fe. Or Santa Fe, yeah. excuse me. Santa Fe calls the uh, timeout. A bit of a, they got a little bit of new technology they're working here on the Trojan sidelines uh, for this home opener. You know, it used to be that you would gather around the iPad, buddy on the bench, gather around the iPad, and the coach would hand it for, to the players. They would all look at it. Well, now they've got the iPad connected to a large monitor. They've got a station for the offense and a station for the defense, so guys can gather around, really get a clear picture of what they're looking at, what adjustments need to be made. So both Greg Calabrese and Adam Gaylor walk in their respective squad squads through that utilizing those big monitors on the sidelines something we haven't seen before rob i know you're a young guy but you know there was a time back in the day where you'd gather around a whiteboard and you'd have a dry erase marker <laughs> I, I don't know if you've heard of those things but that's that's ancient technology i thought maybe you were going to say chalk there for a second <laughs> that's my day <laughs> union went to westmore last night won 49 to 7 those teams are state ranked and owasso Loses to Bixby at TU last night, 42 to 16. Here at Santa Fe, stunning the Jinx crowd, 13 to nothing. Late first quarter, Jinx with the ball for the third time in this opening quarter. Handoff straight ahead is Michael Wilson. On second and six, he crosses the 40, gets a couple to the 41 yard line. Michael Wilson is a guy that they're excited to change the pace with a little bit as a power running back, different look. Then Katie Jones, although Caden really brings a lot of power to his his runs as well. But Wilson built differently. Sorry, Coach Fox. Pretty good linebacker play there, if you ask me, from Tommy Hand, number 30 for, for Santa Fe, just stepping up and plugging that hole and making sure that Wilson didn't go any further. Third and four at the 41-yard line. Far hash mark, left to right, for those listening on the radio. And as Gilkey gets the snap, we got movement. Somebody moved, and it's going to be the Santa Fe Wolves, so that'll give the Trojans a first down. Yeah, we'll catch a break there. Um, had five wide receivers going out on third and four, and fortunately one of those defensive linemen was lined up in the neutral zone. Samaj Stanford, the freshman who starts at safety, We'll also get some carries this year. Number 22, 5'10", 160. And they bring in Corwin, I believe, as a fullback. And it looks as though KD on first and 10. No, he is the tailback, and Gilkey's under center. Handoff Jones. Corwin leads the way in a hard fought three yards down or up to the 49-yard line. That's going to be the end of the quarter there. And so after one period of play in the season opener from Allen Trimble Stadium, it is Edmund Santa Fe leading the Jinx Trojans 13 to nothing. We're back with the second quarter in a moment on the Blitz 1170. Edmund Santa Fe 13, Jinx 
spend some time away. There's no better place for your best friend to stay than Woodland West Pet Resort. With 17,000 square feet of park, you can both take a no guilt vacation. Pick up a new skill. Chow down on some well-deserved vacation. Make new friends. Have a spa day. And finally, come home to your best friend. Woodland West Pet Resort. Sit, stay, and play. Well, the Trojans, when trailing after the first quarter over the last 34 seasons, are 41 and 33. So there is hope here at Allen Trimble Stadium, where the Trojans have won 48 of their last 51 season openers, or overall have won 48 of their last 51 season openers, whether it was on the road or here at home. First quarter stats brought to you by Matt McCoy Insurance, State Farm Agent, 918 615 6634. Jinx has the ball but has 50 total yards to Santa Fe, 110. The only turnover was an interception credited to Santa Fe that turned into seven points, and they lead 13 to nothing. So second and seven, Trojans out going right to left, and play action, and the pass for Jack McAnally by Gilkey is just a little too wide. That would have been good for a first down at the Santa Fe 40-yard line. Play action pass, and Gilkey rolling out to his right after the fake handoff and he's got two guys that are crossing the middle he he had uh, McAnally there and he also had Connor Thompson who we're glad to see back in the lineup after some injuries last year and um, unfortunately couldn't connect on that play other scores coming around in 6a division two Muskogee leads Enid seven to nothing Enid of course in our district more leading Edmund Memorial seven to nothing in the first quarter Third and seven, big play for Gilkey. Throws it out in the flat on a down and out. Caught by KD Jones. Spins off a tackle. Gets the first down to the Santa Fe 36-yard line. Pretty good throw right there, Rob. He had to find a throwing lane across a defensive lineman that was in his face and got it out there pretty quick across the field. Key to execute that, and that's a big first down for this offense. They needed that to keep the chains moving, to stay on the field, and continue to try to build some positive momentum. Five to six passing for Gilkey for 14 yards on that play, 42 total. KD's third catch of the game. He's also run three times for 18 yards. First and 10 at the Santa Fe 37. I think this is the deepest penetration that they've had. KD out of the Wildcat, runs right, goes to the far side, gets to the 30, and then gets ushered out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 31, a gain of six. Pushed out of bounds by number five, Alex Jones. First, first game as a Jinx Trojan, Katie Jones already showing his versatility, guys. You know, being able to take direct snaps, run the ball out of the backfield, catch the ball out of the backfield, line up at wide receiver. They can use him in so many different ways, and we've already seen that here in, in a quarter and change. Sure have. He ran for uh, over 1,000. I think it was over 1,200 yards as a freshman last year at Broken Arrow. Of course, the son of... Former Jinx All-Stater, Kiwan Jones. Good to see Kiwan tonight. Handoff straight ahead. I believe that's KD again. Two, Crushes Kane. inside the 30. Powers his way down to the 28-yard line. A gain of three. It'll be third and one. It is not that I want to wait until the second half to see how things necessarily unfold, but it looks <laughs> to me like we're, we're starting to get some guys moved off the ball. I don't know. Uh, again, there's a lot of these Santa Fe linemen that are playing both ways, and, and so it will be interesting to see if we can just grind this out and wear them down a little bit. Right now, we're doing a much better job of moving that front off the ball. Third and one at the Santa Fe 28-yard line. Blake Bilby in motion. Gilkey, a big quarterback, powers his way to the first down marker. Simeon is 6'1", 190. His brother, Maddox, they both transferred to Jinx after the Jinx Union game from Union a year ago. Simeon was the backup to Ike Owens, and Maddox Gilkey eventually started on the offensive line. First down Trojans. Gain of one, it's what they needed. Maddox did a pretty good job of coming in, learning the system, uh, helping out a, an offensive line uh, after he actually started on Union's offensive line in the backyard bowl. Cats and dogs are living well together <laughs> uh, with all these transfers and stuff. 
swing pass out to KD. He's in jail. Somehow he slips through the 25 to the 20. He's to the house. Touchdown Trojans. That's the kind of electricity that KD Jones, the kind of escapability he brings to this team. Tell you what, Rob, that may be one of the most fun things to see in a Trojan uniform in a long time. He's bottled up. He's about the 30-yard line. Uh, it looks like he's going to be tackled for a loss. All of a sudden, he keeps those legs churning. He gets downfield, and he puts uh, some points on the board and some life in the stadium. Going to do well just to get back to the original line of scrimmage. I promise you guys down here out loud, I said, no way. No way at least three times on that run. Unbelievable by KD Jones. Just a flash of what things to come that later this season for this kid. AC Christensen with the hold and the extra point is up and good by Timothy Foreman. And so we have uh, the Trojans cutting the deficit in half with 10-15 to go. We'll stay here, here in the second quarter. It's now Edmund Santa Fe 13 and the Trojans 7. 27 yard pass play from Simeon Gilkey who threw three passes last year, completed two, did not throw for a touchdown. So that's his first jinx Trojan touchdown pass. And KD scores the first score of the year for the Trojans from 27 yards out. And again, just, I mean, just no toolbox that on display right there, right? The, the strength to get through that, the agility, and then the speed to break it open. Everything in the toolbox, every, every attribute that you want out of your ball carrier on display right there by KD Jones. Yeah, sorry to talk over you there, Rob, but I, I was just going to agree that, you know, again, that drive, why why is that an effective drive when the others weren't? You know, there's no negative plays. There's no there's no minuses there. There's, there's nothing that puts you in a deficit behind the chains that you've got a young quarterback or inexperienced quarterback trying to figure out a way that he can make up a big chunk of yards all at once. So giving these guys some time to, uh, to develop in the offense and, and get comfortable back there, uh, and good four, five, three, you know, six-yard pops at a time are going to pay off, uh, especially with the defense that is hopefully going to change some, some momentum right here on this next drive. Here's the kickoff. This will be from Jack Franklin, end over end kick, taken at the seven-yard line. Up to the 15-20, breaks a tackle, then gets caught from behind at the 32-yard line. And Sam Stone in on the stop on Demarius Robinson. DK, not only did Sam Stone make that tackle, he absolutely obliterated his blocker, decleated him, lifted him up off the ground, chucked him three yards backwards, and then found the ball carrier. He is going to be, and he's just a junior, and what a year he had last year as a sophomore. One of the team's leading tacklers, and as I said, seven takeaways last year for this Trojan defense. Trojans went 65 yards in nine plays. Remember, they had a third and four, and Santa Fe jumped in the neutral zone to give the Trojans a first down, and they marched it in on a touchdown pass. Here's a running play all the way. This is Newton, this time not much, from the 31 up to the 33-yard line, only a gain of two. Still really early. Uh, in this second quarter, but you're starting to see some of the body language change. You're starting to see some of the offensive linemen now from Santa Fe kind of standing around with hands on their hips, kind of catching some air, and I know it's pretty warm out there on the field. Second and eight from the 33-yard line, and no flags. Both lines moved. Here's a pass down the sideline. Back shoulder fade Cooper on the coverage, and well overthrown to make it third and eight. I'm going to just give you an example. Number 77 uh, is one of their senior Awesome offensive lineman Merrick Barnett, but he was even in there on the blocker on that uh, on that kickoff return team. You don't usually see a 300-pound guy on your kickoff return team. <laughs> Not at all. Robinson out of the backfield. Newton fakes a pass right. Going to run. He has nowhere to go. Down he goes, and Sam Stone again with a big play in the backfield. A loss back to the 30, a loss of three, and for the first time tonight, Santa Fe has to punt the football. And you got to give it up to Shockley right there. Good coverage over here at this corner. They were looking to go to this wide receiver on the wide side of the field here. Shockley had him shut down, so he pulled the ball back down. About the time he did, he had a Trojan helmet right in the middle of his sternum. That was Hosea Kazalika, guys. 5'7", 216, senior. He is, uh, yeah, he's 
ex- they're going to they're excited about him. Here's a punt that gets by Connor Thompson. It'll be downed at the 25 yard line. Just going to say happy birthday to Jose. That's a nice birthday present. Today is his 17th nice. birthday. So senior turning 17th today and picking up a big sack right there. Happy birthdays. Well, we could do those later. We could do them now. Now. I just had to say for Hosea, but I know there's another guy that you know pretty yeah. well that had a birthday recently. Jared King, who was a manager on the 2001 state championship team, and um, or 2000 state championship team, or is it 2001? 2000, I think it was. Yeah, 2000. And uh, helped uh, Mason Prince a little bit get our uh, streaming going tonight. So. Well, I was going to give a shout-out to – Jared King, but also Don King and Rob Labor for helping get that program going. We're so excited about Trojan TV. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Owen Jones at quarterback. Hand off KD Jones, 30. Bust to the right side, 40. 50 to the 40. And out of bounds he goes. He's chased out of bounds. But KD Jones is starting to show why he is an All-State candidate even as a sophomore. He already has offers. In fact, Utah... If I remember right, on social media, Utah just offered him uh, this week. I think it was yesterday. Yeah, and yeah. Utah's one of the better teams in the country. Shout out to Jack Wiltshire over there playing that right tackle. And Jack was as fired up as anybody, just paving that way right there. And, and of course, Wiltshire's been a, a, a mainstay on that offensive line that had a lot of turnover last year. He had 27 yards rushing. That 37-yard run gives him 64 on the night. Here's Samaj Stanford for his first run. Or rather, Michael Wilson, I beg your pardon. Number six. And Michael Wilson shows his ability to run between the tackles. He broke a couple and got 11 yards and another first down to the 26-yard line. And there was contact there at about uh, after about four yards. Then he just kept churning and going. You know, might have taken a quarter here, but but things are starting to come alive for the Trojans on both sides of the football. Running a little angrier, a little more sense of urgency to this offense and on the defensive side of the ball on that last series. First and 10 at the Santa Fe 26-yard line. Two fullbacks to the left. Under center, Jones winds to pass and gets sacked back at the 32-yard line. Held on to it too long. And got sacked for the second time tonight by number seven, Jason Wilson. Yeah, that's when you probably want to go ahead and let go, uh, make a safe throw to get it out of bounds, and because now you've you've lost seven yards, a little bit harder to to make up right here. Second and 16. Really good coverage downfield by Santa Fe there. I think he wanted to go over to the near side of the field where he had McAnally and Christensen, and there was just nothing there. And I think after that second read, you either got to tuck it and run or chuck that thing away. Second and 16. Back to the Santa Fe 32-yard line. Trojans down 13-7. to seven. Jones throws a fastball, and it's incomplete. Intended for KD Jones, but apparently they're going to get Ronell Slaughter, number 11, for pass interference. That was a true slaughter, no doubt. <laughs> he, he he got there three seconds before the ball, before the ball did. So uh, ev- I think every yellow hanky on the field is down on that one. Everybody saw that one, so caught a break there. Penalties. It's a quick draw from these officials, man. Those flags came out of a holster. <laughs> Michael Griffin is our referee. I do not recall ever having Michael for a game. But I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the local crew. Greg Brown is the umpire. Jonathan Webster, the line judge. Rick Smith is the back judge. And, Rob, you might know this guy who was a reporter at Channel 6 at one time, News on 6, which is part of the Griffin media family. Dan Bewley as the linesman. Yeah, name sounds familiar. I'm glad that he's uh, moved over from one dark side to another, right? From media <laughs> to officiating. Oh, boy. First down inside the 20. At the Santa Fe 16-yard line, Dan has a son, I think, that just graduated from Bishop Kelly, and he did a lot of video work for them during that time. Swing pass out to KD, to the 10, to the 5. He jump steps into the end zone. Touchdown, Trojans. What a move by KD, and what a block downfield by Kai Beatty, or not Kai Beatty, but A.C. Christensen. Yeah, Don, unfortunately, I think this one's coming uh, back. We've got a flag dropped right here, just inside the green turf, right by the sideline, about a yard onto the field by the side judge. 
Got a little rolling start by our wide receiver on this side. So it's going to come back. Uh, just got a little over anxious right there. And uh, again, kind of a new receiver core for most of those guys. And looks like uh, Santa Fe is actually going to take a little time out. So the Wolves take a timeout with 7.02 to go here in the uh, first half. Hey, y'all. My name is Sierra, and a little thing that I love about this. I mentioned Santa Fe opened uh, their school in 1994. Their second year, they made the semifinals, losing a lot in MacArthur. And then since 01, since 2001, they have had 19 out of 22 winning seasons. So it's been a good program. Dan Kokenauer was very successful at Santa Fe and Kyle White has been pretty good uh, mentor at Santa Fe in his eighth year again an overall record of 45 and 33 but he guided them to the finals against Jinx in 2020 they've had some good players haven't they over the years Brandon Whedon took them to the semis in 01 Justin Hansen was a very good quarterback there and of course the time that Santa Fe came here and won coach a few years ago, I think it was 2019, Talon Shetron was uh, an All-State receiver now at OSU. Boy, he we could not stop him for a couple of seasons. Yeah, the only thing that stopped him was the end of the game, uh, yeah. unfortunately for us. Uh, he, he really created quite a highlight reel while he was here. But great athlete and, and uh, glad to see him contributing in that state school keeping him around second and seven at the santa fe 22 yard line 702 to go first half jinx down 13 to seven trying to get in the red zone need to get to the 16 for first down and over the middle and he's got ac open but owen overthrows him even though christensen was sandwiched between two defenders he had a chance but it was just over his head he had a pretty good he he, he did a pretty good job of trying to hold it enough to give AC a chance to do his break. Wilson was coming in in his face. So Owen held it. He knew he was going to take a shot, uh, but he wasn't able to quite follow through on it. And so the ball floated a little bit there away from AC. Third down and seven now at the Santa Fe 22-yard line. Here comes Christensen, I think, in with a – well, that might be Brody Henderson coming in with a play. It is. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. Jones gets some blocking, stands in, throws. Christensen again at the goal line. He gets knocked over, no call, and that'll bring up a fourth down. I think that one just had a little bit too much mustard on it, but I think they're going to bring out a field goal attempt here. And this will be uh, Timothy Foreman again, a 5'9", 157 junior. Brings up fourth and six. AC Christensen, the hold. This will be a spot at the 29, a 39 yard field goal from the right footed kicker. Trojans will volley three different kickers this year. Snap back, ball down. Kick has got the distance, and it's good. Nice job, Timothy Foreman from 39 yards out. He was out two hours before the game today, practicing. And it pays off. 6.49 to go before halftime. The Trojans have cut the deficit in half. It's now Santa Fe 13, Jinx 10. This is Trojan football on the Blitz app and 11.70 the Blitz. Friends and neighbors. And we make our home. Our home in green country. Like you, we run and fish, hike, and bike. We enjoy the mountains. And lakes. So we know how important staying active is to you. Staying active is to you. We're physicians. And therapists. Of groundbreaking treatments. Of helping you heal faster. Helping you heal faster. We're advanced orthopedics of Oklahoma. And we're the team physicians for more universities. More high schools and more club teams than all other providers combined. We're focused on providing you personalized orthopedic Trojans just marched 52 yards in six plays, get a 39-yard field goal from Timothy Foreman. 
I mentioned the Trojans will try three kickers this year, and of course they're without their punter who looked like he might be the best prospect as an All-Stater this year, Elliot Ataya, out with a knee injury. But they trying to replace Andrew Purcell, who was one of three All-Staters from a year ago. And, of course, Purcell had a tremendous season last year with seven field goals, one of them a school record, 52-yarder. Kickoff, taken at the nine-yard line, diagonally to the 15, and then bang, down he goes hard at the 15-yard line. And the Trojans get a nice open field tackle on special teams from sophomore Case Farrell. Well, defense had a little change of momentum of their own. Did a pretty good job that last series, and so we'll see if that continues here. Um, you know, you talked about the changes in kickers, but, you know, we also have a change in our long snapper. We lost mm -hmm. uh, Jack Stanley, who headed up to Pittsburgh State, and here he's doing well there. Want to say hi to his mom, Holly, big Trojan supporter, and um, but, uh, you know, losing him up front has made a difference as well in the special teams unit. Robinson again shifty, breaks one tackle, gets to the outside, gets from the 25 up near the 30. So gain of about five, they'll mark it four yards to the 29. Second and six coming up. Gain of four, second and six for Edmonds. And they work in a hurry in this brutal heat. Newton gets the snap. Short drop. Now he's going to run on a draw. Gets to the 30. Slides down at the 33. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down, bringing up third and short. I don't think that was a design quarterback draw. I think uh, they, he was looking downfield, didn't see anything that he liked, and so he does have the athleticism to pull the ball down and get a pretty good pickup to make this a short yarder situation on third down. Jack McAnally makes the stop out of the linebacker position. Here's a handoff. Robinson nowhere to go and a flag goes down as well. Robinson eating up in the backfield a loss of a couple. Again, I, I, Rob, I, it looks to me like some fatigue is starting to set in with this Santa Fe team. Holding. Yeah, holding call against the Wolves there are going to back them up. I, I, I would agree. I mean, they've been going fast the, the entire game, and in this heat and humidity, it, it can't be easy for the big boys up front on, on either side. But definitely some momentum has, has shifted from the Santa Fe side to the Jinx defense. And, and really, it looks like the, the guys in Maroon are, are just getting set better. They're, they're just being a little bit smarter about where they're lining up. They're being a little bit more sure with their tackles, and it's starting to pay off. Would you, uh, well, they accepted the penalty to move them back behind the sticks. It will be third down and about 12. Or would you have taken the penalty and made it fourth and four? A little, little bit of a coaching decision there, making it down there, talking it up. And, and they think that this third and 12 is, is harder for them to overcome, obviously. And back them up. We'll see if it pays off. Shotgun snap to Newton. He's going to run all the way. He finds a hole, gets to the 30, and he's going to be a yard shy. Oh, my, and he took a shot. Somebody leveled him about two yards shy of the first down marker. That was close. I, I'm not sure that they're going to pull their punting team out there. I would, I would definitely watch for a hard count to try to draw them offside. They're going to send this other unit out, but I would definitely be looking for them to play a save. Looks like they marked him a little bit farther back than we thought, so right. maybe it's fourth and a long two. Cooper Shockley on the tackle. Second punt of the night coming up for Santa Fe. Virgin Kaiser. And Virgin Kaiser will do the, oh, it's they're going to fake it. They try to run it, and they are stopped. The fake to the up back. Will Shoemaker starting linebacker as a fullback, and the Trojans were all over it and get great field position at the Santa Fe 34. By number 67, Cass Jacobson. Cass Jacobson making a huge play right there. Getting his eyes on that up back and sniffing that out. And uh, Cash is a guy that they were anticipating. They wanted to see more out of him last year. He was plagued by some injuries. He's also a lacrosse athlete. And so he got to return to the lacrosse field. And they were good to see, they were glad to see him competing last spring. But uh, 
he's a guy that they really hope gets some extra playing time and develops quickly for this defensive unit. His mom was a uh, very good basketball player here at Jinx back in the day. First and 10 at the Santa Fe 34-yard line. So the Trojans get great field position, and Gilkey's at quarterback, and he's going to run. Gets by one tackler and then is met at the line of scrimmage and falls forward for a yard to the 33. So that'll make it second down and nine uh, coming up. Trojan football is brought to you by the Jinx Football Booster Club, our best Excel therapy specialist, innovative air pros, air conditioning and heating, Oklahoma veterinary specialist, batteries plus, and A-plus roofing solutions located in the heart of Jinx around the corner from ATS here, Allen Trimble Stadium on A Street. A-plus roofing solutions, 918 get roof second and nine at the santa fe 33 yard line trojans down 13 to 10. just over four minutes left in the half handoff coming left is kd jones and for a guy that really isn't listed very big at 5 11 170 170 part i mean he's every bit of it and he has some strength coach well, it, and I tell you what, when you see him, he, he looks like the old rock wall around this stadium. I mean, he is just solid, and uh, he it, and he takes everything he has with him to the punch and to the to the point of attack. So, um, very hard to bring him down for a loss or or any type of backward momentum. Seven carries, seventy one yards for KD Jones, a sophomore. Third and two at the south or at the Santa Fe. Uh oh. -oh. Santa Fe 26, and we've got a mix-up. Gilkey on a broken play, has to run, and gets pushed out of bounds. That'll be a big loss back to the 33-yard line, a loss of seven. And I think, unfortunately, we're going to have an unsportsmanlike penalty because I think we're going to have a hands-to-the-face by an offensive lineman. That play was just all kinds of bad from the beginning, and it got worse. It looked as though they were going to try. I'm not sure what they were trying there. I'll let you explain that. Well, I, yeah, it's hard to tell if they're going to fake the end around and hand it back to KD or they're going to fake it to KD and, and give it to the end around. I, I, I couldn't really tell. But obviously either the exchange to the quarterback didn't go as, as he was thinking it was going to go or somebody got too close to him that he expected to be in a different position. But it just went from bad to worse. So they – this go ahead rob i was just gonna say i mean it it completely sucks the wind out of your sails you have that nice stop on the on the fake punt you've got a short field in front of you you have a couple positive plays and now i mean you're looking at third and third and an uber here third and 17 at the santa fe 41 yard line so the seven yard penalty was wiped out for the 50 or the seven yard sack if you will wiped out by the 15 yard penalty Gilkey gets the snap, fires over the middle, and that one is almost caught, but a nice defensive play by Slaughter to knock it out of the hands at the 25-yard line, which would have been the first down marker for A.C. Christensen. Yeah, and they're obviously honing in on A.C. because there were four white shirts around there. I mean, it still hit A.C. in the hand, but he got hammered as soon as he got his hands on the ball and a wasted opportunity because you're way far out of range right now and and you're going to turn the ball back over with three minutes you would have hoped to at least get uh, mm -hmm. some more points on the board and tie it up at 13 to go and a half so a punt here coming up from uh, number 24 jack franklin 62205 senior snap is a good one and Franklin with the left foot floats one up that hits just outside the 10-yard line, taken at the 5-yard line, and up to the 17, and that's about it. I thought he had called for a fair catch, but they let him run with it. The tackle is made by Trenton Mason, starting nose guard. Yeah, I think Cooper Shockley expected a fair catch there as well, uh, or he would have been coming around a little bit harder off that edge, but... Uh, Tackle by number kind of a risky place to go ahead and field that punt, but he got straight up the field. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of times you see those punt returners are instructed if that ball is going to bounce inside the 10-yard line to just let it go, and it looked like there might be a chance there for the Trojans to down it inside the five. So like you said, Coach Fox, a bit of a risky move, but it probably pays off with a little, just a little extra field position here for the Wolves. Santa Fe got two touches in the first quarter and went 64 yards and 42 yards for touchdowns. 
Not much here in the second quarter. Handoff. And Cash Jacobson. Number six, Demarius Robinson. Or uh, get some help Tackle by number six, from Zachary Cash Fisher. Jacobson. And I think he's down. Uh-oh. I don't know if it's a cramp. I can't Robinson. tell Robert if he got kind of rolled up on when he got tackled. Talking about Robinson after the two-yard gain, second and eight at the 19-yard line. Here's some other scores to give you. Brought to you by Waldo's Chicken at 71st and Yale. And now in Broken Arrow in Kenosha, west of Lynn Lane, where everything is made fresh daily. 14-7, Muskogee leads Enid at home. Let's see, Choctaw and Dell City. That's a big battle between two very good 5A teams and Choctaw at home leading in Dell City 9 to 6. Sometimes it can be hard to keep up. At TTCU Federal Credit Union. This is actually not a timeout right here. This is an official's water break if you want to call it that just uh, since the heat index is so high. Officials trying to make sure that they're cognizant of player safety and uh, giving them a little timeout here that doesn't cost either team but a chance to get some hydration. So Robinson is off second and eight for Santa Fe at the 19-yard line. Trojans have Cash Jacobson at nose tackle. They have Casalika in at defensive tackle. Four-man front. Newton, the quarterback, gets the shotgun. Hands off straight ahead. And across the 20 to the 22, a gain of three. Demarius Robinson. And it's Robinson again. Setting up third and five. I think they're going to try to get some time off this clock as much as they can before they run this third down play. be interesting to see if the Trojans call a timeout if they stop them short. Well, the, or the Santa Fe team had 96 yards rushing in the first quarter. Here in the second quarter, 17, 22 yards rushing, so much better. Third and five at the 22. Under center, now backs out. Shotgun snap to Newton. Rolls out, throws, caught by Bergen. Bergen's a big low to the 30. First down up to the 37-yard line. Yeah, just a really good call right there. Caught, caught the Trojan defense on a blitz. Bergen is a great athlete, great hands, and uh, just a little underneath screen right there to your H-back guy and makes the defense pay. That's their first first down of the second quarter, their eighth overall in Kaiser Bergen. Picks up big yardage up to the 39-yard line, a gain of 17. That was on a third down play. Number six, Demarius Robinson on the carry. And it's Robinson again. The big chunks and holes in this interior defensive line in the first quarter, you have not seen that in the second quarter, so that's a good development. Now just need to go ahead and get these guys stopped in third down. Minute 25 remaining in the half. Santa Fe with the ball in the lead, 13 to 10. After a two-yard gain, second and eight. Newton flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run it to the 40. Chases to the 45-yard line. And out of bounds he goes. Kalmashon, good speed right there. Gets across, gets him out of bounds. But they do stop the clock with a minute nine here. One of the things the defensive coaches have stressed is we've got to get takeaways. They want three takeaways this game and so far have not come up with any. Whereas the Wolves had one takeaway with an interception that was batted at the line of scrimmage. Returned for eight yards and then Santa Fe knocked it in for their second touchdown. Newton. To Robinson, he's open, 50, look out, 40, to the 30. I don't think they're going to catch him. They're not. What a home run play for Santa Fe. The last thing the Trojans needed to give up with a minute to go in the first half. They're back to a two-touchdown lead or two-score lead. Yeah, what you see right there is the how big that play with that underneath screen to Burson, uh, Kaiser Burton was, and then they just uh, – gash the Trojans up the middle. I don't think we were quite lined up right in the interior. They're going to come back to the swinging gate look here, but they look like they're going to come back to try to kick mm. it with a nine-point lead. Ooh, that hurts. That really takes some steam out of this first half. Extra point is good by Purvis, and so it is Edmund Santa Fe 20 and the Trojans 10 with a minute to go here in the first half. 
Well, Coach Fox, I thought you brought up a good point a few plays before. It seemed like the Jinx defense had reestablished the line of scrimmage. It looked like they had kind of taken back the point of attack and some of those creases, some of those holes that were there in the first quarter to create easy running lanes were starting to disappear and were starting to close up. And then all of a sudden, the seas parted once again and all it takes is one, one gap and away we go. Well, it's really unfortunate because you, you go back to when the defense has a great stand, they stop them on a fake punt. We got a short field to work with. The, the score is 13 to 10. We have the momentum, but, uh, you know, we don't get any points out of, the, out of it. We end up with some plays that, that back us way up, and we have to punt the ball away. And then uh, not only do we punt the ball away when we have a chance to go ahead or tie it up on a short field, we give them a, a big third down play to get the first down with just a little bit of time remaining, and then they gash us for that one. Um, really hurts, but, I mean, you're looking at, instead of going into halftime, Don, at, you know, a 17-13 lead possibly, or at least maybe a 13-13 tie, now you're down 20-10. Yeah, that's a big swing. 55-yard TD run for Robinson. Six plays, 83 yards. The extra point good with a minute to go here in the half. 20-10 to 10 Santa Fe, and an update brought to you by Community Care of Oklahoma. All health plans are available. Medicare enrollment coming soon. Check out prescription drug plans as well at Community Community Care of Oklahoma, ccok.com. Here's the kickoff that's bobbled at the 12, picked up, and finding a lane up to the 40 to the 45-yard line is K.D. Jones. Number two, K.D. Jones. That's another guy that could do something and change right. things in a hurry, can he? Tripped up by number two, Kyrus Henry. So the Trojans on a 38-yard return by KD Jones, first and 10 at the 45-yard line for Jinx. It looks like Owen Jones is going to come out at quarterback, I believe. So KD Jones tonight, four catches for 54 yards and a touchdown, seven runs for 71 yards, and a 38-yard kickoff return. 163 total yards here in the first half for the sophomore. First and 10 at the 45. Jones in at quarterback. Out of the shotgun. Jones stays in the block. KD Jones and a pass finally caught over the middle by Elias Cooper. First down to the 35 yard line. His first career catch in his three seasons at Jinx for number seven. And the Trojans are going to call a timeout right here with 48 seconds left in the ball about the, what, 32, 33 yard line? It's another Trojan. Elias does a good job. He gets behind the linebacker and he comes across the field, crosses in front of that safety, and, and Owen does a great job of getting that ball to him in a hurry. That was a really well thrown ball there by Owen Jones. Not a big window to squeeze it into, and Elias Cooper kind of had to turn his body at the last second to snag that thing, but that's a nice completion. Well, you had KD with four catches, AC with two catches here in the first half, so you needed somebody to step up, whether it was Bilby, Thompson, Shockley, Beattie, somebody, and Cooper does it for a 22-yard gain. Season 106 for the Trojans. 34 consecutive winning seasons going all the way back to 1989. I mentioned Andrew Purcell, an All-State kicker. Trojans haven't had many kickers that were All-State, but Purcell had a great year last year and was joined by Cooper Crisp and Jalen Stanford as Jinx All-Staters. Jinx has had at least two All-State players every year, Coach, since 1992. Wow. Isn't that crazy? All right, first and 10 at the Santa Fe 33 for Owen Jones in a quarterback. They set up the screen over the middle, and it's tapped on the rush intended for Jack McAnally. Good call, but again, you know, Wilson has proven that he is not just a, a long, tall defensive lineman, but very athletic. He does a good job of timing his jumps and disrupting those passing lanes, and those guys are, are not only coming at the quarterback, but doing a good job of getting up and just knock that uh, screen pass away. Again, this is a Santa Fe team. They went 1-9 and nine last year. Gave Jinx fits in the season opener. Jinx got a Cole Whittington pick six in the third quarter last year to come from behind and win that game 13-10. to 10. Santa Fe lost five games by within eight points 
last year. Here Jones going to run, not known for his running ability, but he scoots up to the uh, scoots down to the 29. The clock stopped with 38 seconds left. As he gets a four-yard gain to make it third down and six. So at least you want to get three out of this, right? Yeah, and I, I, I think we're pretty close to where we kicked the last field goal. It's in a different part of the field. We're in the middle now, but can't remember exactly how long that last one was. 39. So this would be a little bit farther more back. More personal, more convenient. Tulsa ER and Hospital brings 24-7. We'll check some other scores coming along here. Providing patients with short wait times. See how broken arrow. See if I got a broken arrow ER Bentonville Hospital. score. No emergency care I, should be. I do not. 21-14, Muskogee leaning to Enid. By the way, with 38 seconds left, the Matt McCoy Insurance Halftime Report will commence here pretty soon. And Rob Labor, you had an interesting uh, interview uh, here at halftime. Yeah, I had a great chat with Paul Phipps. Anybody in the Jinx community in this area probably familiar with that name. He was a, a member of the 1993 state championship team uh, under Ron Lancaster. And ever since then, uh, he's just been an integral part of this Jinx community. His three kids have gone through Jinx. Has, his last one is a junior this year. Of course, his son, Braden Phipps, uh, had a great career here, went on to play at OBU. So it was fun catching up with Paul Phipps and reminiscing with him a little bit. Out of the shotgun, Owen Jones on third down, throws a fastball, and what a catch by Christensen at the 20, out of bounds at the 15, first down. Wow, that was an all-state catch right there. It was a great throw. He got it there quick. He needed to get it there quick, and, and AC does a great job of handling a hot tamale right there. And I'll tell you what, Blake Bilby does a nice job of giving him a little crease at the edge to get him an extra five or six yards before he steps out of bounds, kills the clock. Great play. Gain of uh, 16, first down, down to the 13. AC's third catch of the day. 32 seconds left in the half. Well, you'd love seven here, but you'd settle for three. Jones, under pressure, fires and overthrows Christensen over the middle. I don't know that AC knew that was coming to him. The way he looked, at it, he looked like he started to go up for it and pulled his hands down because maybe he thought somebody was behind him. Connor Thompson, Elias Cooper are also receivers along with Blake Bilby and KD Jones. So it's second and 10. The clock stops with 28 seconds left. And Coach Fox, you'll have an interview here at halftime around the campus with Eric Fox. I'm uh, really excited about that, talking to Mason Means. Uh, Mason Prince. Mason Prince, excuse Sorry. me. It's all right. May, well, I have too many Masons to go back. I saw Mr. Means walking up the stairs, <laughs> so I had to give Mason a shout-out. Here's a backward pass to Jones to the 15. Powers his way down to about the 12-yard line. They'll have to stop the clock with 22 seconds left. Yeah, just going to say, Don, just excited about this Trojan TV program, and it's something a lot of people worked on. Uh, you know, you've been a big part of it. Rob, obviously, was a big part of it from his perspective. Got expertise from people in the industry like your son, Jared, uh, Ward Macon, obviously Mason Prince, Kimberly Catterson, our career counselor, did a tremendous amount of work, and Brent Suki from the Football Booster Club, you know. Um, a lot of input on uh, how to make an opportunity for kids to learn about broadcasting and digital media and all the opportunities that are out there in front of the camera, behind the camera, producing, editing, doing all the stuff. So big, big shout out to everybody that made that such a team effort and excited to talk to Mason about the opportunities that our kids are going to have there in this area. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching uh, the stream, all home games will be free on YouTube. Just go to Trojan TV. Mason Prince starting the program, and he was busy, busy this afternoon out here in the heat getting everything set up. Appreciate all of his efforts. Third and three coming up for the Trojans at the Santa Fe six-yard line. Trojans down 20 to 10 with 22 seconds left in the half. Zach Cox. Kneel down and uh, snap it back to the quarterback, Owen Jones, with KD Jones in the backfield. Now they split him out. Bilby split to the left as well. AC to the right and Connor Thompson to the right. Now KD in motion and Jones goes right. Being chased. Look out. He's sacked back at the 11-yard line. And the third sack of the night 
for number seven, Jason Wilson. They're going to try to get this play off. I don't know that it's going to happen. With five seconds, trying to field goal, get the snap back, ball down, the kick is up, it's got the distance, and it's good. That is impressive. What pressure for 39 Foreman to come out and knock home a big field goal at the end of the first half. Wow. That was a 30-yard field goal for Foreman, so he's kicked a couple of field goals here in the second quarter. Santa Fe got a 13-0 lead. Jinx has cut it to 20-13. to And we go down to Rob. Yeah, thanks, DK, down here on the field with Coach Riggs. Coach, 20-13 to 13 at, at halftime. Talk to me a little bit about the defensive side of the ball, some of the issues with the Santa Fe run game, how you were able to adjust, and then they hit the big one there at the end. What needs to happen better in the second half? Well, you know, that they dominated us the first few drives up front. Um, they just pushed us around. We we kind of settled in after that. It got a little better. We gave up a crease. We didn't fit right on the, the one long touchdown, but uh, much better. I've... I've I don't want to say I feel good, but uh, for where we're at, only down one score, you know, we'll take it going into the second half. Offensively, obviously, KD Jones, a big weapon, showed what he was able to do as he switched quarterbacks each drive. What needs to change on the offensive side of the ball, or what do you want to see start clicking a little bit more? Well, it, kind of the same as last week in the preview. You know, we've just not been very consistent. We've had some good plays, and then we've made some mistakes and got behind the chains, and, and we can't have those, you know. It, it We'll keep, you know, if our bad plays are one or two yard gains, uh, we'll be in a lot better shape. Real quick, what's the message at halftime? What are you emphasizing? Well, I think just, you know, they won the first the first half, but we're only down seven, you know. So if we'll settle in and just do you what guys, we're capable of, time. we'll be in good shape. There's Coach, appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Back upstairs, guys. All right, thank you very much. And, of course, that visit brought to you by Riverside Ford of Tulsa. Riverside is by your side as well as by the side of Keith Riggs here at halftime. It is Santa Fe 20 and Jinx 13. Back to recap the first half. The Matt McCoy Insurance Halftime Report starts after this break on 1170, The Blitz. <laughs> so what's the halftime flow here? Huh? What are you doing for halftime? Uh, nothing is going to go together. So I'll just recap the whole time. Well, what a uh, tale of two quarters here in uh, this game. The Santa Fe Wolves 
jumped out to a 13 to nothing lead. They scored the first two times they had the ball. And Daniel Newton, nine yard TD run. And then the second time after an interception by linebacker Will Shoemaker, uh, they drove, uh, had a nice drive where they went 42 yards and scored on a Demarius Robinson 13 yard run on third and goal and led 13 to nothing going into the second quarter. Trojans though got going between the end of the first quarter and the second quarter. They had a nine play 65 yard drive, a 27 yard screen pass out to KD Jones. And the sophomore went through five defenders uh, when he looked like he was gonna get stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he uh, eluded them for a 27 yard score. Extra point by Timothy Foreman was good, 13 to seven early in the second quarter. Trojans came back after a three and out and got a 39 yard field goal from Foreman to make it 13 to 10. After Santa Fe, another three and out. The uh, Trojans, actually it was a fourth and one. They faked a punt, went for it, Jinx stopped them, but the Trojans had to punt. They couldn't do anything after getting to the Santa Fe 41. And then Demarius Robinson broke loose for a 55-yard TD run to make it 20 to 10. But the Trojans responded with a field goal of 30 yards by Foreman at the end of the first half on the last play of the half and trail 20 to 13. When we come back to Labor Report, brought to you by Woodland West Animal Hospital and Pet Resort. As uh, Rob mentions, he visits with 1993 All-Stater Paul Phipps. And then uh, Eric Fox around the campus visits with Mason Prince. All that straight ahead on 1170 The Blitz. Now entering the field, the Jeeps Trojan Pride. The Trojan Pride is under the direction of Scott Hillick, Julie Cryer, Brian Gartner, Mark Stevenson, Kenny Martin, Grant Jensen, and Sam Silverman. Another guard is under the direction of Annie Coggins, Braxton Dileski, and Lexus Lampo. Percussion instruction is by Mark Stevenson, Kenny Martin, Noah Smith, and Foster Maddox. Additional staff includes Robert Sladen, Carol Sanders, Brett Coon, Jeremy Hunt, Colton Hines, Tykeen Rainey, Jamar Morrison, and Jeanette Richard. He may never play, but your job is making you better too. And if you can't do that, then what are you doing? Then you shouldn't be starting a 60 year old. I don't think it's senior year. Well, this is a funny way. You know, they told me Kimsey's inconsistent, and I'm like, it's not a reason And so I put questions on him, and he looked, and he took it. This year's show is entitled Unraveling. Musical selections include Bolero by Maurice Ravel, Take a Bow by Muse, Symphonic Metamorphosis by Paul Hindemith, Voodoo by Muse, Libertango by Astor Piazzolla, and Danzone No. 2 by Arturo Marquez. The production is a creative representation of different ways one can unravel music, sound and shapes, color and emotion. The intent is to take recognizable melodies and unravel them slowly and chaotically throughout the program, all while bringing them back together at the end as the production twists your ears and eyes to manipulate what was there into something new. Because he's the biggest kid you've got, you know? Like he can move and he's strong. But I use it as a coaching thing for my kids too in life. And like I told them, if you don't give up, keep pushing the rock any one of them, you know. So, and that's all you can, you know what I mean? What year is it? He's a junior. But, I mean, that's a, I'm just going to take it as the life lesson. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to take it as a life lesson. Yeah. 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 That's why I told my friends, I said, you know who's the all-time movie first player? And he was like, who's the all-time movie? They don't even, they don't even, coach, they just haven't kept them around for it. Yeah, I think you're good. Um, but, I, you know, I think that's a microcosm. They're not so many kids. No, that's one thing Chick is bad. Is that they, they just expect him to play well, but not enough. He can either play or he can. And then the New York town is He's got a little bit of ego. But when he does, he's good. He's good. And you got a town for him. He's going to rotate and play. 
And now for your halftime entertainment, drum major Sophie Hopkins, Hadley Kirk, Rachel Oakes, and Tessa Summerlin. And the Jukes, Trojan Prime. Bandmasters Association State Marching Championship Top 6 Finalist, a 2016 participant in the Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California, and will be a participant in the 135th Tournament of Roses Parade on January 1st, 2024. In addition, the Trojan Pride Concert Bands are a four-time Bands of American National Concert Band Festival Honor Group, a six-time Oklahoma Music Educator State Convention Honor Group, an OSSAA Sweepstakes recipient since 1985, and the 2015 Grand Champion for the inaugural President's Cup National Concert Band Invitational in Washington, D.C. Tonight's Trojan Bride Halftime Performance has been sponsored by New Life Ranch, Ron and Kathleen Henderson, Allstate Insurance, Brent Hagar, State Farm, and Sawyer Manufacturing. To find out how you or your business can help support the Trojan Bride, visit our website at www.jinxband.com.
here, and a little thing that I love about the Chick-fil-A spicy chicken biscuit is that it has the perfect amount of spice to jumpstart my day. I just love how the biscuit just matches perfectly with the spice on the chicken fillet. Whoever thought of it, thank you so much. Hi, my name is Robert, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A spicy chicken biscuit is the biscuit. It reminds me of my grandma's homemade biscuit. It's always buttery and savory. The chicken is always crispy. Then you add the spices to the chicken. Instant classic. Trojan fans, want to order official Jinx Trojans Under Armour gear at a discounted rate? Scan the QR code on the back of your ticket and receive 20% off Jinx Trojans Under Armour sideline apparel. Help support Jinx Athletics. Go Trojans! Ladies and gentlemen, all Jinx versus Union Backyard Bowl tickets will be sold online only. 
No cash tickets will be sold at the gates. To purchase your tickets, go to GoFan.com and search Jinx Athletics. Tickets will go on sale Tuesday, August 29th at 7.30 a.m. Yeah, we're, we're here. We're ready.
man. Two minute break. Oh well. It's all good. Alright. Jack Franklin will kick off as we get underway at Allen Trimble Stadium for the second half, and this is a rocket into the end zone, and Santa Fe will take over first and 10 at the 20. Taziki's Mediterranean Cafe gives you the individual and team stats at halftime. First downs jinx 10 to 8. Here's a big number. Santa Fe, 20 runs for 180 yards in the first half. Jinx, 81 yards rushing. Santa Fe, 3 of 7 passing for 30 yards. Jinx, two quarterbacks, pretty good. 9 of 13, 112 yards, but that one interception set up a Santa Fe second touchdown when they went up 13 to nothing. Total yardage, Santa Fe, 210. Jinx, 193. Third and fourth down conversion, 6 of 10 for Santa Fe in that first half. Most of those in the first quarter. Jinx, 3 of 8. Penalties, three for 30 yards for Santa Fe, one for 10 for Jinx. First play from the 20-yard line, banged down quickly at the 21, is Demarius Robinson, I believe. He is their leading rusher with a 55-yard TD run, a 13-yard TD run. That's his 11th carry of the game for 115 yards. Tackled by number 31, Hudson Ball. All right, so adjustments coming up here for the second half, Coach, brought to you by Excel Therapy Specialists. We'll get your thoughts after this second and nine play from Newton. He fakes short, throws deep, and he's got a man wide open who drops it up at the 45-yard line. Nate Veers was wide open. Yeah, they had that set up great. Run, 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 and, and short passes, and they don't pass the ball a lot, so that was a double move. The quarterback gave a pump fake on the outbreak, and the receiver turned it up the field, and we were not ready for that moment. So got a break right there that it went through his hands. We've just got to stop the run. We've got to do our thing. and We've got to control the football on offense, you know, just like Rob said before the game. Third down swing pass to Robinson, but he's hit as he catches it, and down he goes at about the line of scrimmage, and there's your player to bank on, Zachary Fisher, with the stop. Yeah, nice play right there, and uh, Caden Jones was out there at corner, and he's coming off the field like uh, he's a little bit hurt. Something I don't know if he's starting to cramp or what, but he was playing the corner on that series starting the game. He did not play in the preview last week. Actually, they're going to say about a loss of a yard, fourth and 11. Here's the punt. Pressure applied, but Bergen gets it away. It hits at the 45-yard line, and Jinx has it. And they're coming left up to the 40, and a nice break to the 50-yard line by the Trojans. Sa uh, freshman Samaj Stanford, and he gets into Santa Fe territory down at the 35-yard line. Takes the ball. Uh, looks like he, he lets it bounce like he's going to let it go, and then uh, he picks it up and starts to go outside. There's not a lot there, and he cuts it back up inside. And Caden Jones is on the sideline there, Rob. He's got his helmet off. He looks like he's trying to stretch out. I can't tell if he got dinged up or he's frustrated or what's going on, but he is not in the lineup right now, and he, I know he does not want to be out of this game. He came over to the sidelines with a little bit of grimace on his face. He's trying to get loose. I think it was just a cramp. They gave him what looked like a shot of something on the sideline. I don't know if that's Petey Light, pickle juice, or, you know, some magic recipe, but he's trying to get it stretched out and, and, and back in the game here pretty quick. So the Trojans have great field position, down 20 to 13 to start the second half. Stanford in their uh, player in motion. This is Gilkey running all the way. And a nice job of grabbing him at the line of scrimmage is Bergen Kaiser, who's been offered by OSU and TU. He went to the OU summer camp, and Gilkey dragged him for five yards to the 32, and we have an injured player with cramps. That's their best player out of the secondary, Caius Henry. Yeah, uh, A.C. Christensen right there just drove block him to the turf, and as soon as he hit the ground, he was grabbing at his hamstring and his calf, just cramping up, uh, uh, you know, Physical stamina, conditioning is going to be huge tonight, and the Trojans are going to have to demonstrate some sort of physical advantage. Great stop by the defense right there coming out on that first series. Now, again, offense has a short field, and they really need to take advantage of it right here. 
For those that are listening back. on a go ahead, Rob. Oh, sorry, DK. Sorry? I was just going to say I wanted to go back to that that punt return by Samaj Stanford. You know, for people who are not familiar with this kid, just a freshman, uh, they knew about him coming up that he was phenomenal in seventh and, and eighth grade. So they knew they would have something special on their hands. But you know, talking to Coach Riggs a couple days ago, he was saying this this is not a normal freshman, and not in any sense of the word, not mentally, not physically at all. So it's it's going to be really fun to watch his development, and you got a glimpse of what he's capable of right there. Indeed, a 30-yard return. For those that are listening on the 1170 The Blitz or the app or on the FM DA 106.9 HD2, the uniforms tonight, the Trojans in their Jinx maroon helmets, maroon jerseys, white numerals, and white pants, the old-school look back in the day, and Santa Fe in their road whites, jerseys and pants with the green numerals and the green helmets. Those uniform descriptions brought to you by Yale Cleaners. Same day dry cleaning if needed. Get it in by noon tomorrow and it'll be ready by 5. Our thanks to John Rothrock and the rest of the people at Yale Cleaners around town. The second half adjustments that Coach Fox talked about brought to you by Excel Therapy Specialist. If your body needs some adjustments from setback to comeback, you need Excel Therapy Specialist now in celebrating 20 years with five metro locations. Second and five coming up for the Trojans at the Santa Fe 32-yard line. KD Jones, by the way, eight carries, 78 yards. He has a he has caught four passes for 54 yards, one of them a touchdown, and he had a nice kickoff return in that uh, first half. I think it was 38 yards. So here we go, second and five at the Santa Fe, Santa Fe 32. Trojans down 20 to 13. Connor Thompson comes out left along with Bilby. Out of the shotgun, Gilkey. Hands off. This is Michael Wilson, and he dives past the first down marker to the Santa Fe 26-yard line, a gain of six. I like to see it. I like that physicality. I like that forward momentum, up, that push up front. Michael Wilson running. Uh, good, solid, tough runner. And uh, just six, seven yards, you know, we can really start chunking some things here, keep that defense on the sideline, and try to take this game over with the physicality. Yeah, because they have uh, hit some home run plays against the Trojans tonight for three touchdowns. Scored their first touchdown when it was fourth down. First and ten, bobbled snap, Gilkey in trouble, and down he goes back at the 39-yard line. Nine, Trojans continue in this game to take two steps forward and a step back as Jalen Battle, a sophomore, comes up and makes a big play back at the 35-yard line, a loss of nine. And we're going to be very fortunate they give us what they consider the has to be forward progress because uh, he got a huge loss right there when he tried to scoop it back up. Now one of the Santa Fe players that actually fell on Gilkey, he goes down with a cramp. I mentioned at the end of the first half, the Trojans have had an All-State player, at least two All-State players every year since 1992, and have had an, at least one All-State player every year since 1987. And uh, while we have a break here with 9.33 to go in the third quarter, I want to certainly congratulate the Trimble family as uh, July 1st, Around the uh, 4th of July weekend in Seattle, Washington, Courtney and the two daughters, Tyler and Tori, and uh, their husbands, uh, Carson and uh, Morgan Thomas, had the pleasure of going up along with Coach Riggs and uh, Nancy uh, and a few others for the Alan Trimble induction into the National Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah, just a tremendous accomplishment. And, you know, I had breakfast with uh, Coach Melton, Darren Melton, two days ago, and uh, we were just talking about things and talking about how, you know, in 98, we're working with some incredible people and incredible kids and through some incredible times, and you just don't appreciate it when you're in those moments. You don't realize what you got. You know, I was just a young, naive coach, and I thought, oh, we're always supposed to win, right? You know? So, uh, but uh, – and talking to Coach Riggs kind of about those moments today, just just the incredible foresight and wisdom Coach Trimble had in building former, I mean, future incredible coaches. Yeah. And we can talk about that some more. We've talked about his coaching tree a lot, but we can talk about that some more later as well. Second and 19 after the loss of nine, K.D. Jones in the backfield with Gilkey. 
Handoff KD looks for a hole. Down the middle he goes, and he drives his way inside the 30 to the 29, a gain of six to make it third down and 13. By yeah, talking to that team. moment, talking into that moment with Coach Riggs today. You know, we we talked about how Coach Trimble was really able to see not only the potential of players that he could develop, but the potential of coaches. I mean, said Keith, you got to recognize a, a computer programmer that's never coached right. high school football before, right. and and he hires you to be a coach, and you end up being the next head coach of the Jinx Trojans, and so. Uh, Coach Trimble, just an incredible spotter and developer of talent. Sure was. Third and 13 at the Santa Fe 29-yard line. Back to pass. Gilkey had some time. Now flushed out. Runs down to the middle. 30. 25 breaks a tackle to the 20. Dives to the first down marker out of bounds. And if they give it to him, that's one of the more athletic plays you'll see all season. And Gilkey might be hurt. They're calling for Mike Catterson and the training staff to come over and check on him as Gilkey absolutely went airborne and might have landed on one of his shoulders as he got the first down at the 15. Is that the old Sam Bradford moment at uh, Boone Pickett Stadium when he goes airborne to, to pick up the first down? It kind of looked like one of those moments, but he is down, and they do give him the first down. That's just an incredible gutsy play but sur surely hope that he's not injured severely. You know, Simeon Gilkey, great athlete, maybe not a natural runner at the quarterback position, but he does have that ability, as he showed just there, and can add that element to the quarterback run game to, to put some extra stress on a defense. And, man, made a nice move there in the open field to cut to the sideline and then just wasn't going to be denied for that first down marker. Great awareness of exactly where he needed to get to and laying it all on the line and... Yeah, you just hope it's hope he got his bell rung a little bit and is able to able to get up and walk off. I knocked the air out of him. They were working, I think, on his shoulder, but we'll certainly let Mike Catterson and his staff take care of uh, Simi and Gilkey. Um, but back to Coach Trimble's coaching tree. Coach Trimble won 13 state championships as a head coach. His coaching tree has won 14 state championships. Of course, Lauren Montgomery, seven with Bixby. And uh, Darren Melton won one himself at uh, Lincoln Christian. And you go on the tag gross at Holland Hall and uh, a few others. But there are guys that have knocked on the door that haven't quite made it. Bishop Kelly, J.J. Tapana, David Tennyson at Beggs, Matt Hennessy at Pahuska. I mean, there's quite a few that haven't quite been able to get that first state championship, but they've been knocking on the door as well. And it's great news as you see Gilkey, for those watching on the stream, able to come off on his own power. That's great news. That's great to see. What a run that was. A lot of guts right there, a lot mm -hmm. of guts to find that first down marker. And, and like uh, Rob said, this was not going to be denied. I can't tell if it's cramp. He's going back yeah. down to, to do cramp uh, or if it was some sort of knee. But they're going to work on him again some more. Looks like he's cramping up. First down at the Santa Fe 15-yard line. Trojans down seven with 8.42 to go. They were down by as many as 13 in this game. Four-man front for the Wolves. Handoff straight ahead. It's K.D. Jones breaking it to the five. Down to the one-yard line. First and goal. I tell you what, I really thought he was going to get in there. He does a great job. Big line push on the left side. But about the time he gets to linebacker depth, he cuts it back to the right and just barely is brought down by a guy hanging on to his ankles. Uh, falls to the two-yard line. Bounces into the end zone, but his knee was down at the two. Um, and uh, for one of the first times that I remember in this game, we had Owen Jones under center right there taking the direct snap under center as opposed to the shotgun snap. First and goal at the one-yard line. Landon Corwin comes in as a fullback. Owen Jones is under center. Gets a snap, pivots right, handoff KD looking for another scorer, and he's going to be denied just short of the goal line. You know, I was thinking as – um, Keaton Jones on the carry. That KD isn't that big, powerful guy that you get here down here in the red zone when you always had a Grant Goodwin or a Trent Tabor or somebody like that. But, boy, he has shown that he has some strength in those legs at 170 pounds. I know at one time they've talked about using maybe Hudson Ball as the season goes along in these situations at 232 pounds. Yeah, KD just does a great job of always falling forward. Um, but... Uh, Probably looking for a sneak right here. 
Levin carries 98 yards. Here's another attempt. Trojans think they have the score. No signal yet from Michael Griffin, and now it is. Touchdown, Trojans. Owen Jones just gets right down behind that big offensive line and gets the left side and push. There's nobody in the backfield. Everybody's up towards the line of scrimmage, and nice push by that left side there. DJ Lyles, you got Zach Cox, who's really come a long way, developed a lot of strength this offseason in the summer, did a great job in the weight room. Just gets down there behind those guys. Lucas Houston, Lyles, all those guys helped him get in. Well, here's the snap. The hold by Christensen. Foreman with the extra point. Tried to tie the game. It's up and it's good. 7.27 to go in the third quarter. The first time the Trojans touched the ball, they marched 63 yards and have tied it. Jinx 20, Santa Fe 20. 7.27 to go third quarter. You're listening to Trojan football on 11.70, the Blitz. I'm not wearing 30 pounds of gear and, and exerting my body as, as much as I possibly can. So I can't imagine how, how sticky and uncomfortable it must be for some of these guys. They've got cold towels down here and, and just buckets of water and trying to keep as many electrolytes and liquids in them as they possibly can. But yeah, the humidity is unrelenting. I mean, you don't have the sun anymore, uh, which would be a double whammy, but it is it is heavy. That's the best way I would describe it. It's heavy down here. Jake, Jack Franklin to boot it away. Demarius Robinson is the deep man for Santa Fe. He's had a big game. Bryson Kuranoff is also deep. This will go to Robinson, and he has a step in the end zone. They let him run it out to the 10. Going left to the 20. Breaks a tackle. Steps over another and gets up near the 30-yard line. Boy, I don't understand that. I mean, he looked right at that back foot that stepped right into the end zone, and then... 
He let that clock run. I, I can't believe that they didn't blow, blow that dead, but uh, he didn't. So, and now it looks like they've got another guy down there cramping up. I'm surprised, actually, we haven't had more players um, have that issue this evening. Trojans 20, Santa Fe 20. 7.20 to go, third quarter. Don King, Eric Fox, Rob Labor as usual on the sidelines. A pleasure to have you with us. Bryce Hulse again producing on the radio side. And Mason Prince producing on the live stream. You can go to YouTube. It's free. Go to Trojan TV. Trojans on the defensive side. Defensive line will update the, uh, the starting lineup, but... Usually on defense, it's going to be 67, Cash Jacobson at one end, Hudson Ball 31 at the other, Trent Mason 42 is the nose guard. The outside linebackers are 15, Sam Stone, and number eight, Jack McAnally. They'll put them on the line, too, as well, as they're good edge rushers. Inside backers are Zachary Fisher getting his first career start in place of the injured Jace Hager. And Jet Kalmas, number 20, back from losing him a year ago to a season injury. And then the free safety, Grant Newor, number 17. Number 22, Samaj Stanford, the strong safety. Elias Cooper and Cooper Shockley, the corners. Here's a toss sweep. Trying to come right. Cuts back. And a nice hard run by this Joseph Hinton. He has had some nice runs today. And he picks up eight here. Yeah, Robinson was actually the, the player that was cramping up on the side for Santa Fe. So he had to come out. So they... Brought in 25 Beeson, and he he has hurt us a couple times, and he's he was uh, not deterred as he approached that Trojan defense and picked up some extra yards after contact. Second down and two from the 38-yard line. Four-man front. Newton wanted to throw deep. Instead, he's going to run. Slides down and is short of the first down. He gained a yard to bring up third and one. Same play that came back with the opening drive of the second half uh, he uh, out and up pump fake um, this time Shockley's out there on the coverage and was in his hip pocket there was nowhere to go he pulled it down and then slid when he actually probably could have picked up the first down he's just a yard short Jet Kalmus on the stop Jet had 11 tackles against Santa Fe in the season opener a year ago wide snap Newton Gets the first down. He banged into the running back, and that kind of propelled him past the line of scrimmage to the 44-yard line. Yeah, poor break right there. Not very good gap control up front by the Trojans. I don't know if we had our ears pinned back to try to bring him down, but uh, Robinson is back in at uh, tailback position now for Santa Fe. Newton, a five-yard gain there to make it first and 10, and here's no gain. Yeah, Robinson got hit hard right there as he got into the line. Cash Jacobson again in there. Again, the Trojans' defense stiffening a bit since that first quarter when they gave up 96 yards rushing in the first quarter, but then a 55-yard run for a touchdown by Robinson gave them a 20-10 lead, but Jinx is tied it now 20-20 midway here in the third quarter. And Newton's back to pass. Throws the fade. He's got a man open on the back shoulder incomplete. Good coverage back there for the Trojans by Ace Gilliam, a six-foot, 142-pound sophomore move in from Glenpool. Just got to do a good job of managing these downs, not giving up anything big because they do not want to have to make a, a, a living the rest of this second half by going to the long ball. That ball and the receiver were just really out of sync. So somebody was not on script right there, and, and that's what the Trojan defense wants with this quarterback. Third and 10, 44-yard line. Newton gets a snap. Straight ahead, Robinson. Oh, and he gets punished after he got past the line of scrimmage. Sam Stone with another big-time hit. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Tell you what, that, that lane looked open to run for a while, and Robinson's starting to accelerate, and all of a sudden he can't accelerate because the missile of Sam Stone is just launched straight into him for a big, huge stop and bringing up fourth down. Virgin Kaiser back to punt. Samaj Stanford deep for the Trojans. Virgin Kaiser to punt. Samaj Stanford, the freshman, awaits back at the 15-yard line. I think this is the fourth punt of the night for Edmund Santa Fe, which hits at the 25. 
And will be down just inside the 20 at the 19. Well, here are the Trojans for the first time since the opening kickoff. A chance to take the lead with 4.31 to go here in the third quarter. Number one, Bergen Kaiser. Is you know, really, the defense has done a good job coming out this second half, and, and uh, this is going to be a tougher drive for the Trojans, um, you know, back deeper than they've been most of the night. Looks like Owen Jones is coming out there again at quarterback. I know Gilkey has been moving around the sidelines. I don't know his status. Rob may be able to check on that, but um, – just need to sustain a really good job here and at least flip the field position. Trojan show power to the left. Only two receivers. Handoff. Jones tries to cut back and gets about six yards up to the 25-yard line. Tough sledding for this Trojan offense tonight. But KD has worked his way as uh, his first start for the Trojans, 12 carries, 104 yards rushing. He does such a good job of pressing that line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. getting up to that linebacker depth level, and then he, he's cutting it back. And, you know, any of those cutbacks have the potential to be huge, huge gains. But even if he's pressing up into that line of scrimmage for six yards there, that's some good ball control that's keeping, keeping that forward momentum that we need. They shift here on second and fourth to 25, right to left. Under center, Jones. Owen Jones, handoff KD. Jones hit at the line of scrimmage and does get forward again for about two or three yards and shaken up on the play. Jalen Battle, a sophomore defensive lineman who made the tackle. This is his second time to go down with the cramp in the past couple of minutes. So while they await a third and a long one yard, probably third and a yard and a half, um, Trojan football is brought to you by Advanced Orthopedics of Oklahoma, the region's sports medicine authority. Jinx team doctors again. Thanks for Dr. Hendricks and Dr. Shockley, Dr. Hawkins, who have taken care of the Trojans for many years. And, of course, Dr. Shockley's son, Cooper, starting now at cornerback. We'll see him at receiver some this season. They take care of 25 high schools, six universities, and professional teams like the Drillers and others. Our thanks to Advanced Orthopedics of Oklahoma, longtime sponsor of Trojan football. Well, we uh, also thought of the keys to the game, Eric Fox, as you go back to thinking of your keys to the game, how have they uh, materialized here at 3.34 to go in the third quarter? Well, uh, okay, so first of all, my number was 25. So as long as, you know, <laughs> Edmund Santa Fe stays under 25, if the Trojans You're are good. over 25, I'm okay there. But, you know, like Rob said, and it's just basic football, can you run the football and can you control the line of scrimmage enough to stop the run? And that's what it's really going to come down to, especially as these guys are getting tired. While we're talking about the offensive line just grinding one out, got to give a shout-out to Sam Saban. U.S. Air Force uh, got a message from his mom. She just texted me. They're watching the live stream. They're listening to the broadcast, and Sam is shipping out tomorrow for the for United Kingdom. So nice. Appreciate Sam and his service and, of course, all the Sabans and their – what they mean to Trojan football. But, uh, um, yeah, it, it, this this would be a Sam Saban kind of night. Hey, coach, let's run the football. Let's go right at them. Um, and let's just physically dominate our opponent. And that's what it's going to take. Who is the last man standing here as we come down towards the fourth quarter? Sam, an All-State center in his day here at Jinx. And, of course, Kevin and Henry Saban and our best donating a dollar for every point scored by the Trojans this season. Three and a half minutes to go, third quarter, tied at 20. Third and short, handoff, KD Jones and that offensive line really starting to take charge now. KD doesn't get a lot, but he gets enough for the first down from the 28 up to about the 33-yard line, a gain of five. Yeah, and then, you know, some of these short yarded situations, they bring in the extra beef with Kai Beatty and Landon Corwin, the fullback tight end combination there. Coach Fox, I'm pretty sure between those two guys, they could squat a small Subaru. <laughs> Maybe a Cadillac. Come on now. Don't sell those guys short. They're not Kia kind of guys. First down at the 33. No, they're Ford guys. Ford 150. Oh, he got stuck in the backfield. And uh, 34 lost his helmet. Avion Childs, he'll have to come out. Gain of a couple there. Trojans just trying to 
get the lead and just take care of business in the trenches right now. Owen Jones at quarterback. Rob, I don't know if you – it looks like Simeon Gilkey's over there by coach. And I know they kind of rotating some things, but I, I don't know if he looks like he's good to go or just making sure he's staying in the game mentally. Yeah, I'll get an update for you guys here as soon as I can. All right, second and eight from the 35. Jones has time over the middle. Oh, and it's intercepted off the receiver's hands. AC couldn't hang on to it. Now you got to try to tackle him. And KD Jones does just that at the 34-yard line. Intercepted by Dante Austin. Goodness gracious. Another turnover by the Trojans. By number eight. Dante yeah, AC had it in his hands, and you just, again, it comes in there kind of hot, and AC's running across the middle, so it's at a really flat trajectory. Goes through his hands there and right into the hands of the Santa Fe uh, defender. It wasn't great coverage. It's not like the defender made it an outstanding play other than just the fact that he had the wherewithal to catch it on the deflection. But uh, now, again, instead of moving the ball down the field, defense is backed up under the shadow of their goal line. I think the last time they had that interception, uh, the last time they started in Jinx territory, it was at the Jinx 42 after that first quarter interception where they scored a touchdown and made it 13 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Handoff Hinton this time. He is gummed up. Man, good job defensively. Hudson Ball finished him off but I think uh, 42 is in the middle of that inside the nose guard Trent Mason you know defensive coaching staff said before the game their goal is to get three takeaways so far no takeaways uh, on this Santa Fe offense and the Trojans have given the ball to their opponent twice so far second and nine Newton the quarterback's been dangerous going to try to run here and he sneaks forward inside the 30 to the, about the 29-yard line with a minute and a half left in the third period. By number 22. Gain of three, makes it third down and six. I would think Santa Fe, this is two-down territory for them as Cash Jacobson checks in on the defensive line. Newton again. Oh, this time in the backfield. Hello. Great defensive play by number eight, Jack McAnelly, the junior linebacker. Offensive line pulled right there. McAnelly read it great, shot through underneath the pull and made a great play, and that was something that they needed. You're right, it's fourth down, and they're going to go for it here. Um, they may call a timeout to talk about it. I'm not really sure, but I'd look for them to try to drop off sides and then maybe call a timeout. And big play, maybe play the game so far. Fourth down and seven. Newton's to pass. He throws the fade. And that one's well overthrown and out of bounds. And so the Trojans get the ball back after the interception with 33 seconds to go here in the third period. Huge stop. Good job, Shockley, right there playing corner. I tell you what, it's th this offense can kind of lull you to sleep back there. It's, it's a lonely job playing man-to-man -man against a team that runs it. You know, this game probably more than 60%, but showed so far that their tendency is 60% run to pass and Shockley does a good job of staying at home and making sure they don't complete that. And Santa Fe coaching staff was wanting a pass interference call right there but good no call I think and uh, the Trojans dodge a bullet now they got to take advantage of it. Trojan football brought to you by Riverside Ford Tulsa. Go online look over the vehicle of the week. They offer the service where they pick up your vehicle, service it, and drop it back to you. Another reason why Riverside is by your side. Riverside Ford of Tulsa. First down from the 31. Jones out of the backfield. Empty backfield. Gilkey's back in. Tries to find room. Cuts back twice. Beats two defenders and gets to midfield and a first down. Nice pickup. I like the way that he runs it up the field. Want to make sure he's securing that ball right there. He's excited to be back in the game. Um, you know, you talked about the athleticism. Not only did he play football for the Trojans last year when he came came over from Union, but he was on the basketball team and the track team. So not very many three-sport guys no. uh, left in 6A1, and Simeon's not afraid to go compete. So I uh, really want to see his competitive spirit right here on this drive. Had an older brother, Scotty, that was a backup quarterback for the Trojans several years ago. First and 10 at the 50. 
Simeon hands off. KD, boy, he, he just ran into a wall there. He'll lose a yard. Number two, Caden Jones on the carry. The Trojans have tried to throw the ball deep tonight to AC, and it just hasn't really worked out much. They did have one long pass down the middle to Elias Cooper in the first half, and that's the end of the third quarter. Trojans will have the ball second and 11 when we come back with the Trojans 20, Edmund Santa Fe 20. It's a season opener for 2023. Thanks for joining us on Trojan TV and 1170, the Blitz. Ladies and gentlemen, direct your attention to the north side of the field where we will have a bonus performance by the Jinx Varsity Palm and Jinx Varsity Cheer Squad. <laughs> Nobody completed a pass in that third quarter. Santa Fe had 180 yards rushing in the first half. They had only 17 yards rushing in the third quarter, 197 total, 30 passing. Jinx had 64 yards rushing in that third quarter to go along with their 81 at halftime. So they're up to 145 yards rushing. Overall, they're still 9 of 13 passing today. Well, I beg your pardon, 9 of 14 with two interceptions. The only pass of that third quarter was an interception. So here we go to start the fourth quarter, tied at 20, and the Trojans have second down and 11. Now moving left to right on your dial at their own 49-yard line. Ball from their 49 -yard line and 11. Gilkey's the quarterback out of the shotgun, gets the snap, looks to fire. Steps up, now has to run it, and gets by a man to the 40. First down to the 35. Spins forward and powers his way inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. I'll tell you what, I, I, <laughs> you, you hate to question the judgment of the quarterback. You know, those guys have to be able to make split-second decisions. You know, you want them to take care of the football. I, I don't mind when it opens up like that to not force anything down the field. Um, and as long as he's securing the ball, that's a huge, huge pickup. And it puts a lot of strain on the defense. So I, I, I like that right there. And I like to see, you know, him going to get that first down and keeping, this, keeping those chains moving. His last three carries of 14, 19, and 23. Here's KD stood up and dropped after maybe a gain of a yard or two. KD's had a nice debut in the Trojan Maroon uniform. 17 carries now for 115 yards. Looks like he's starting to take a little beating in there. He's going to go down. I don't know if it's a cramp or just he got he stood up when he got to that line of scrimmage a little awkwardly. Wasn't able to keep his pad level down. So I don't know if it's, a, again, a cramp or just... It's hot. Yeah. Man, it is hot, humid. Tough, tough night. The heat index will not even get below, uh, I think, 100 degrees by the end of this game tonight. Let's check the weather for you, for those that might be watching elsewhere. 89 degrees right now. And uh, not much wind, only 6 mile per hour wind, 95% humidity or 55% humidity. Again, it's 89, feels like 95 right now. Tough, tough night. It's been a tough summer, obviously. By the way, the Trojans win tied going into the fourth quarter over the last 34 years that haven't been tied much. This is just the 19th game they've been tied going into the fourth quarter since 1989 and in those previous 18 games, 10 and eight. I'll go for 11 and 8. Yes, I'll thank settle you. for that. Trojans' home record 
over the last 34 years. They went 5-1 and one last year, 191-19. and 91% winning percentage. Well, I was just going to say, if you want to master all these stats historically, I know a book that you can get. <laughs> Well, you could have gotten. You, you had to be pretty uh, quick to get it as it sold out uh, right before the end of the season. But will we, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to reproduce one here in the next year or two. Second and nine at the Santa Fe 28-yard line. Trojans need a big play. Handoff going left. This is a new running back, Jordan. Aiden Jordan powers his way inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Or that's Desmond Nash. They are excited as I am, to see these two youngsters run, two sophomores, number 40, Desmond Nash, 5'10", 195, or Aiden Jordan. Yeah, that, that that was Jordan, wasn't it? Yes. Or was it Jordan? It's another Trojan. I think it was. They were talking about Jordan being in there before Nash. One's 40, one's 41, so I apologize if I misidentified. He got 10 yards, needing nine. That's the 17th first down of the game for the Trojans. So it's first and 10 at the Santa Fe 18 with 10.38 to go. Looks and like the, some confusion, yeah. so they're going to call timeout. Well, the play clock was pretty much down to zero. By the way, we want to uh, say hello. Thanks for the 1,000 or more that are watching now. 1,200 people watching on Trojan TV tonight. Again, our thanks to Mason Prince producing and all the students that are putting the stream on. And um, our thanks to the Blitz 1170 with Jeremy Poplin and uh, the producer Bryce Holtz. Hey, tomorrow from 4 to 6, the Blitz 1170 gives you a, a little bit different show. It's a horse racing show. All right. Uh, Toby Moore and Harry Willis and I do horse racing shows periodically on Saturdays on the Blitz 1170. Tomorrow at Saratoga Racetrack is a big day of racing. Uh, it will be the Allen Jerkins uh, handicap named after Big Al's uh, dad, who is a Hall of Fame trainer. And uh, also the Ballerina Stakes, which features Lee Levinson, a Tulsa attorney, his nice filly, Echo Zulu. And then the Traverse Stakes, which features the top three-year-old fillies who just got done with the uh, Triple Crown races. And the horses that won the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont Stakes will all participate tomorrow. It's only the third time since 1978 that three different horses won the three different Triple Crown races. So that's tomorrow, 4 to 6, here on the Blitz 1170. First down at the 18-yard line for Simeon Gilkey at quarterback. Wants to throw. He's in trouble. And throws it away. Nice job there. Number nine, Simeon so it's second down and ten. The way Foreman has kicked the ball, uh, you can't dismiss the fact that the Trojans could kick for three here to take the lead as Foreman had two field goals of 39 and 30 yards in the first half. Rob, it looks like there's a little bit of a breeze that's picking up in that uh, south end zone. Second and ten for Jinx. I don't know if it's swirling or if it's coming at the Trojans or what. Uh, if you look at the flags in the in the southeast corner of the end zone, yeah, it looks like it's picking up a little bit. But down here on the field, I can tell you, you can't feel hardly anything down here. <laughs> Your hair's not blowing around or anything? Well, that's a different story. Uh, second down and 10 at the 18 again. Gilkey, inside handoff. Look at this move. Down he goes. Stanford, touchdown. Trojans. Samaj Stanford on his first run of his varsity career on the inside cut. Bust it for 18 yards and a Trojan go-ahead touchdown. Looks like Wiltshire is going to have to come out right here. He's cramping up. But I tell you what I really liked about the way Samaj handled that is as he got close to the end zone, defensive back from Edmund Santa Fe was coming up behind him like he was going to try to strip the ball. There's a lot of guys that just kind of lose their sense of ball security. He goes ahead and shows that presence of getting into towards the goal line and making sure he secures the ball, can't be punched out, and uh, gets in the end zone. Big, big first run right there for the youngster. Snap back from Brody Henderson. The kick is up. It's no good. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. No good on the PAT with 10.20 to go in the game. What a season opener this has been. Wow. 
So we'll take a break with 10.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. It is Jinx with the lead for the first time tonight, 26-20 to 20 over Edmund Santa Fe. A lot of time left with Trojan football on 1170 The Blitz. Along with our producer, Bryce Holtz, Don King, Eric Fox, Rob Labor on the sidelines. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for all the listeners, uh, the good friends checking in. It is a family affair here with uh, the Trojans, and we love having you listening in and watching as Trent, or I'm sorry, Trent Troy Tabor is watching in from Grand Lake. I'm sure he and Scott West are doing some barbecuing. We appreciate uh, them watching in trent Tabor could be watching from new york trent, trent Tabor is trent just nice. texted me and said uh, when aiden jordan got that carry he said jordan can fly so trent Tabor is uh in in the big apple doing some things there with his wife and doing some performing so good luck to trent but it's good to hear yep. from him and glad he's one of these 1200s on the broadcast exactly so mr means came up at halftime said his 92 year old dad is got us on youtube and, and watching us nice. my mom in moore oklahoma has got it on the ipad tonight so really excited about this opportunity not only for trojan football fans but for these students right had a chance to talk to some of the students before the game they're really nervous uh not a lot of them know a whole lot about football and so it's going to be a first experience but i said look you guys are doing something historic tonight and uh, appreciate you being here and just uh, it's going to get bigger, bigger and bigger and better and better. So appreciate what Mason is building into these young people. And again, the opportunity that's been afforded them through Trojan TV. Hey, guys, real quick update from down here on the sidelines. Katie Jones has his shoulder pads off and it looks like he's done for the evening. He's very upset down here on the sidelines, being consoled by his teammates. Badly, desperately wants to play the remainder of this game, but it does not look like that's going to happen. All right. Here's the kickoff taken up to the 20. 22-yard line. It takes a lot of Trojans to bring uh, number 15, Devontae Sarton, down. But down he goes. By the way, Santa Fe scored the first two times they've had the they had the ball in the game to lead 13 to nothing. Then the next two series, pretty much three and out. And then the fifth series, a 55-yard TD run by Demarius Robinson, his second score of the game, gave Santa Fe a 20 to 10 lead in the second quarter until Timothy Foreman hit his second field goal of the game at the end of the first half to make it 20-13. The only score so far in the second half has been an early fourth quarter touchdown we just saw. Actually, the Trojans got two touchdowns in this fourth quarter and now lead 26-20. to So here is Santa Fe first down at the 22-yard line. Can they stop this guy, number six, Demarius Robinson, who as a freshman ran for 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns. Last year, played in only four games, was hurt most of last year, but did have a big game against Edmund North to the tune of 26 carries, 270 yards, and three touchdowns. Here he gains a yard to make it second and nine from the 23. And he's going to get it again. Tries to get to the outside. Good open field tackle. That was beautifully done. And the tackle by the freshman, Stanford. Yeah, and Santa Fe trying to pick up the pace a little bit, but with some linemen, a bunch of their linemen have been cramping up. So like we talked about, conditioning, physicality, all of that's going to, going to come into play here. But we know that these guys can score in a hurry if they get a crease. So just have to be very disciplined on this third down short play. Third and three from the 29. Newton throws a pass and incomplete. 
Nice job as Sam Stone was getting ready to lower the boom on Robinson. I think right there, Zach Fisher came up and made a hit as he got his hands on the ball. Brings up fourth and four for Edmund Santa Fe. But it looks like they're going to, nope, they've got their punt unit on there. But some confusion. They've got Remember, too many guys on the field. They really faked it once. They wouldn't do that here with 9.16 to go at their own 29-yard line. But they did try to fake a punt once and try to run it for two yards and was denied the first down. Elias Cooper. Elias Cooper is deep. Here's the kick. It's a line drive, end over end kick. Bobbled and Cooper showing why he is a veteran player just to fall on it at the 31-yard line. 40-yard kick. Well, here you go, Trojans, 31-yard line, 9.08 to go. Will it be Gilkey or Jones at quarterback? So Trojans are 69 yards away from maybe getting an insurance touchdown here. Trojan football brought to you by the Jinx Football Booster Club, which includes our best bank, Batteries Plus, Excel Therapy Specialist, Innovative Air Pros, A-Plus Roofing Solutions, and Oklahoma Veterinary Specialist. Now with Katie Jones out, Michael Wilson is in at running back. Hand off to Wilson. Trying to get to the outside. He's more known for running between tackles, but here he spins forward and gets a first down. He carried the ball, I think, two or three times last year, but did have a 19-yard, no, one time for 19 yards, a touchdown very late in the season. Um, in mop-up duty, but looked as a hard runner and has throughout this preseason and has done a nice job picking up uh, 11 here. 19th first down of the night for the Trojans. Wilson again, three carries for 24 yards, and he's got more, much more to the 50, and another first down for the Trojans inside the 45-yard line. Yeah, I like the way that uh, Coach Calabrese is working again with these, these quarterbacks and Owen Jones in there. Owen Jones, no stranger to competition himself. We talked about Gilkey and all that he does, but uh, Owen Jones, a state qualifier wrestler uh, as well in his own right, very accomplished, very poised. So just taking this leadership role in, in, uh, in stride right here and coach, coaching him up. And I know our wrestling coach, head coach Dustin Hughes, knows a lot about state champion wrestlers and state qualifiers. He's excited to have Owen a part of their program as well. Uh-oh, loose football, and Jones covers it. It'll be a loss of about four. 12, yeah, if your last name is Jones, uh, you, you probably – a pretty good wrestler if you're in that family. Ernie Jones, of course, is uh, Owen's grandfather. Uh, was the wrestling coach for years at Casha Hall, but before that, Booker T. Washington and Coach Kenny Monday, who went on to win Olympic gold medals as a wrestler. And, of course, Ernie, one of the great coaches in wrestling history in the state of Oklahoma. And then, of course, Biff is Owen's dad. And you got Biff and Rodney. I mean, what a wrestling family that is. And uh, other brother, Sean, yes, uh, Sean. coached here. He coached, I coached junior high wrestling with Sean way back in the day here. So after the loss of four yards, second and a long 14 until Wilson busted to the 35-30. Moved the chains again with seven and a half minutes remaining and the Trojans leading 26 to 20. You got Kai Beatty, a, a guy who knows what it's like to grind it out. You got a lot of enthusiasm. Wiltshire, who went off on that last uh, touchdown with, with a bit of a cramp. Those guys are fired up. They're running on adrenaline right now. They're saying, Coach, feed the beast. Let's just keep this <laughs> thing rolling. You can see, guys, just how important it is to have depth at some of these key positions like running back on a hot night like tonight where guys are cramping, could possibly go down. Katie Jones out of the game. Samaj Stanford makes a big play, and then you see about three or four consecutive nice runs there by Michael Wilson. After the gain of 19, here's a toss sweep to Stanford. Look at him go. There's a flag down. Stanford will score again, but it'll probably be Bart brought back. 
Yeah, we're going to get a hold on the edge out there as Smaz struck it towards the sidelines, got towards the numbers and busted it out. And they're going to say that AC was illegal use of hands or holding out there on the edge. That's the third touchdown called back in this game. The Trojans have had now two touchdowns called back. Santa Fe had one earlier in the game, although they did go on and score on that drive. And remember, at the start of this second half, they had a double move by the receiver on the second play from scrimmage, drop a what looked to be a sure touchdown pass from about 61 yards out. Yeah, I, I mean, we say that, and we know there's yards. a lot into the into the pitch and the catch, right? But again, this that is not how this Edmund Santa Fe team is going to make a living right. all year long. Correct. So, um, you know, that it looks like it's a routine play and and you ought to make that play but it's 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 difficult difficult conditions tonight and, and sometimes the hardest ball to catch is the one when you're wide open but you know that that is not going to be santa fe style all year long so if they're having to revert to that then the defense is is in decent shape first and 20 now to santa fe 38 yard line leading by six Jones in trouble and he's sacked again. That's the fourth sack tonight. This time it's by Virgin Kaiser. Again, the 6'3, 240 pound senior who's got several offers. Some feel uh, he'll end up at OU with his teammate who's an offensive lineman on the Santa Fe team, Josh Isosa. Yeah, and here, you know, you got second, and as my good friend Rob Labor would say, second and an Uber, right? So, Rob, you don't want to try to get all this back in this one chunk, right? Well, and also we want to give some love to our friends at Lyft. You know, we, we, don't, want to, we don't want to discriminate. There's always future sponsorship opportunities out Thank there. Thank you. So, yes. Second and 28. Oh, they had the screen set up. Now Jones is in trouble, and he just throws it away. There was a man out in that territory, and so it'll be, it will not be grounding. Third and 28 from the Santa Fe 46. Six minutes to go, so we're midway through the fourth quarter. The Trojans just trying to buy some time or at least evaporate the clock as much as they can here. And I think that might have been one of the things that the Trojan coaching staff were yelling from the sidelines is maybe just eat the ball instead of throwing it out of bounds to stop the clock. Well, it was supposed to be a screen pass, yeah. I do believe, and uh, he took a big shot right there. Um, Third and 28. This one's batting into the air, and he bats it away. Or Jason Wilson, who has three sacks in this game, might have picked it off. Well, and the problem was going to be if Jason Wilson picked that off, there was nobody that was going to catch him because there was nobody between him and – the uh, sharp center. 26 20 Trojans, 5.56 to go in the fourth quarter if the Trojans were down 13 to nothing and then down 20 to 10, down 20 to 13 at halftime, but have come back to score two touchdowns here in the second half. One in the third quarter, one in the fourth quarter. The last touchdown, they missed the extra point. Here's the snap and the boot by Jack Franklin, and he blast one and that one goes out of bounds you couldn't have asked for a better kick from jack franklin in his very first football game he's been a goalkeeper on the soccer team and they're excited about him well and we got to give it to the special teams tonight uh you know there's there's a couple big plays that come to mind being able to rush out there with no way to stop the clock right before halftime getting your unit on there getting a, a new snapper and a new kicker lined up and and driving it home to get some points on the board right before half, that's huge. And then kicking it into that coffin corner right there with that punt is uh, pretty significant. And we know that uh, Santa Fe can move the ball in a hurry, but this makes it a whole lot harder to cover that much distance. 5.49 remaining after the 43-yard kick. Santa Fe's got it at their own three-yard line. Robinson. Scoots forward, maybe just back to the line of scrimmage. Be a good time for a safety right here, wouldn't it, Rob Labor? Yeah, we could dial one of those up. 
especially after that missed extra point. You know, you're just in that territory where that missed extra point is sort of lurking, looming, makes you a little nervous. Two on the board would feel a lot better right here. Actually, a loss of a yard. No, no gain. Second and ten from the three. Look out. This pass incomplete. Was it tipped? I couldn't tell. Yep. It got tipped. I'm not sure if Rob could tell who got up on that. I don't know if it was Hudson Ball or somebody else. Newton tonight passing 4 of 12 for 29 yards. Only one completion in the second half for a minus one yard. And the receiver looked like he did not know the ball was coming to him at all. Third down. Newton's going to run. Tries to dance to the outside, and good open field tackling by Sam Stone. Newton torched him big time in the first quarter, but they have corralled him, and Sam Stone has been a big part of that. It'll be fourth down. Well, and the tackling has just gotten better as the game has gone on. I mean, that was a tackle that was missed in the first quarter routinely when they had a shot to bring the ball carrier down, and uh, they've been a lot more sure with with their tackling here as the game has gone on. So a little breathing room here for the Wolves on the punt, but still high-pressure situation here punting from your own end zone. Good snap, and he gets it away. Wobbly kick, Stanford. He's going to corral it at the 40-yard line and his knee touchdown. That's all right. First and 10 Trojans at the 40-yard line. Can they run out the final 431 of this game? Don, I'm going to go out on a limb. Here's a big prediction right here. If before the game holds true when I said they score 25 points or less, mm -hmm. I feel really good right now. Good. I'm sticking to that. How's that sound, That sounds, Rob? sounds good, Rob. Yeah, I mean, potential uh, sponsorship opportunities again with Caesar <laughs> Sportsbook and DraftKings. So appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you throwing those out there. Sticking, sticking my neck way out there and say we need to hold them under 25. This is a big drive right here. Just got to eat up some clock, keep that ball moving forward, take care of the ball. No stupid mistakes. They got Wiltshire at left guard. We'll check the lineup here as Michael Wilson gets hit after a two-yard gain and another player down on a cramp. This one's Kaiser. Tackle by number three, Devin Howard. Devin Howard on the tackle. You know, these uh, guys on the offensive line have been coming together. Uh, each change of possession coming over here to the sidelines, looking at the film and, and, and really spurring each other on. And after that Samaj Stanford touchdown, you could hear him saying to each other, that is Trojan football. And right now you have an opportunity to impose your will and to really commit to playing Trojan football here on this last drive as we go under four minutes to go. Corwin fullback on the right. They go right. Quarterback Gilkey is bottled up. He's trying to get inside the kickout block right there. We pulled a lineman from the left side over to the right, and uh, <clears throat> timing was just a little bit off. And Gilkey tried to bounce it outside, but there wasn't any room. And now looks like Santa Fe is going to call a timeout. Third and ten coming up, so gain of two, and then a loss of two. So the Trojans stalling here on this drive as they've taken a minute off the clock and Santa Fe burns a timeout. So this offensive line that you alluded to has been really, really good with the Dylan Lyle at left tackle. Lyle was gonna be an offensive lineman for this team last year, but injuries prevailed, kept him out of the 2022 season. Then he got ready again in the spring and got hurt again, but here he is healthy and wishing him the best for the senior. Senior three-year starter Gavin Kirby at left guard. Zach Cox, as you mentioned, a junior who played in some stressful games last year and as a sophomore really kind of struggled a little bit um, at times, as did the entire offensive line because they had to move so many guys around. And uh, Zach Cox has made great strides and leading this offensive line. Lucas Houston, a two-year starter at right guard. Jack Wiltshire, two-year starter at right tackle. Kai Beatty at tight end. They have taken control of this game and the Trojans have come from behind to lead at this point, 26-20 with 3.26 remaining. <clears throat> this well, is where you really- Coach Fox to put his offensive coordinator hat on here. Do you stay conservative and keep it on the ground or do you try to put the ball in the air, which has been a little bit risky lately? No, you run the ball. 
They send out Stanford. Gilkey's back. He does air it out. He's got a man open over the middle. Incomplete. Christensen had beat the defender, but the Trojan passers just have not been able to hook up with number 23 much tonight, even though he's been open on a few occasions. And so it's fourth down, stops the clock with 322 remaining. So since I said that so emphatically and you baited me into that, Rob Labor, <laughs> I'm sure you knew what Coach Cal called. It was a great call. I mean, uh, AC was wide open up the middle. Um, they had committed to stopping the quarterback run right there. Um, AC was open. Would have been a huge first down, if not a touchdown, if he catches it, but just out of his grasp. It will be the fourth. Uh-oh, and this snap goes over Franklin's head. He doesn't have much experience. What's he going to do? He's got to get rid of it. And he throws it away. Wow. If he'd gotten tackled inside the five-yard line, oof, I would have fallen off my chair. Wow. Wow, what a time for that to happen. But Henderson, or rather, uh, thank goodness Franklin had the wherewithal to throw it away. If he was coached to do that in terms of, hey, if this ever goes bad, this is what you do, then that's a great job by coaching. If he just figured that on his own or he got lucky, the one will take it because I don't think that Coach Riggs has started to breathe yet anyway. It's going to be marked at the Santa Fe or at the Jinx 40-yard line. There's With, a lot of hearts oof. and a lot of throats down here Ooh, on the Jinx sideline yes. and in the Jinx stands, I can tell you that much. So this defense has not had a takeaway. It is time they really need to step up and get a takeaway. Trenton Mason, Hudson Ball, Cash Jacobson. Flag on the sidelines against Santa Fe. I'm sure it's going to be a sideline warning. But a flag is down right now on the Edmund Santa Fe sideline. Flag on the plate. Brody Henderson in on the defensive front. Brody's the one that made, I think, the bad snap. And so he would love to get redeem himself here. You've got uh, Sam Stone or um, Jack McAnally, Jet Kalmus and Zachary Fisher at linebackers. You got Trenton Mason down there, somebody who they were really hoping could have a good game tonight on that defensive line. Got Elias Cooper at one corner. The safeties are Sam Stone and Samaj Stanford. Here's Newton wanting to air it out. He throws. He's got a man open, but he underthrew him. Looking for Robinson out of the backfield. There's a busted coverage because there was no corner anywhere near him. Samaj came over the top from his safety position late, but either the corner was supposed to be in a deep quarter look and, and broke off on the underneath route or some sort of miscommunication. But again, we got lucky on a busted coverage. Trojans up 26-20, but Santa Fe's got the ball at the Jinx 40-yard line. Second down 10. Robinson breaks a tackle, breaks another, gets to the open field of the 20. He might score, and he does score. Oh, my goodness. Demarius Robinson comes back to haunt the Trojans with the third score of the game. We've got somebody down in the backfield with a cramp. I think it's maybe Elias, or is it Samaj? That's no, not Elias. Only their second first down of the second half. And it comes with 2.57 remaining. Well, and just when I said, guys, you know, on that last possession that the tackling had been better, it just wasn't there on that play. A couple guys with a shot at Robinson and some high steps and a nice move to the outside as he kind of jumped around Elias Cooper there. And that's when they're going to be shaking their heads about. They had a shot to bring him to the ground just beyond the, the line of scrimmage after he kind of got through the line and just unable to do it. The only, I guess, positive spin you can put on this is that they scored quickly, and there is a ton of time left in this game. 2.57 to go, and the Trojans still with two timeouts. Yeah, he, Robinson, we, we've said it all night. I mean, there's there's times where he's been bottled up, and, and we've done a good job of containing him, but any time he's had any kind of room, he has been very dangerous to, to be capable of taking it to the house, and uh, he does a nice job of weaving his way through some open field there and some missed tackle opportunities, unfortunately. Of course, it's unfortunate the defense is in that, in that position as well, just – just a lack of consistency, early game, tough opponent, athletic opponent, but we knew, you know, 
there are areas that we needed to improve on from last season and um, unfortunately just the inconsistency at times on both sides of the ball whether it's getting first downs on offense or whether it's giving up big plays on defense um, hoping that somebody makes a big play here on the special teams so Maj Stanford whom they desperately need with KD Jones out of the game so Maj limps off with the, what appears to be a cramp Goodness gracious, 2.57 remaining. Now we're tied at 26, so this is a huge extra point attempt. They've lined up at swinging gate all night. We'll see if they line up at swinging gate or just a regular kicking formation. Looks like they're going to come to the regular kicking formation. Coach Gaylor taking that opportunity to coach his guys up, not get overly frustrated or disappointed, but just coach them up to make sure they play this play. Extra point up and good by Kale Purvis. So with 2.57 remaining, it's Santa Fe back in front, 26 to 27. By the way, Brad Heath, who has helped us over the years, just uh, sent me a note. The clock should have stopped at 3.05. It ran eight extra seconds after Robinson scored. Are you ready to escape the breathtaking so a two-play drive after the Trojans botch a snap on a punt. And Santa Fe got a short field after an incomplete pass, got a 40-yard TD run from Robinson, his third score of the game. He's got 16 carries for 168 yards. So the Trojans will rely on... Maybe a big time kickoff return here. AC Christensen and Elias Cooper will drop deep. Connor Thompson and Blake Bilby. Bilby will replace Stanford on the kickoff return. Of course, you don't have Caden back there either. Right. On this. Good so point. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Santa Fe decides to kind of squib this instead of kicking it deep. There have been a couple of returns that have been close to breaking wide open so we'll see what Santa Fe elects to do here Trojan football brought to you by Advanced Orthopedics of Oklahoma taking care of the 18 time state champion Jinx Trojans quick excess quick answers quick appointments seven days a week at AOOK.com they'll kick it short this will be Christensen at the 15 yard line up the numbers to the 30 finds a lane to the 40 Breaks a tackle and gets out of bounds across the 50 to the Santa Fe 45-yard line. What a return for number 23. AC does a great job right there on fielding it, but also a great job by that, uh, that unit to make sure they give him a crease up the sidelines. No panic. Um, don't need to panic. Just go play Trojan football. Um, but AC makes a big play right there. Again, you're down one, so you could ask Timothy Foreman to try for his third field goal of the night. But we've got 2.49 to go. We've got to get down there first. And we've got Owen Jones in the game, quarterback. Michael Wilson at uh, tailback. Kai Beatty tight into the left, who will split out along with Blake Bilby. Connor Thompson and A.C. Christensen split right. The snap from Zach Cox. Hand off to Wilson. A reverse to Christensen. And he has nowhere to go. He's in trouble. Does do a good job of getting back to the line of scrimmage and then gets three yards. Wow, that was impressive. Aiden Christensen on the reverse. Tackle by number seven, Jason Wilson. Lucas Houston leading the way out there blocking. I don't know how he turned that. A loss of about seven or eight into a gain of four. Just some indomitable spirit mm -hmm. right there because he was he was hamstrung and bottled up and uh, Owen Jones trying to set a little screen for him there and he found a crease and AC's gave, gave no some great effort. I'm sorry, Don. Yeah, uh, AC's no uh, stranger to running the football. He was a quarterback as a sophomore, switched to receiver last year. Jones is going to send Thompson in toward the line of scrimmage. Second and six, handoff Wilson. 
Nice job there. He picks up about three yards, maybe four, when it looked like he had nothing going for him. With two minutes to go in the game, and the Trojans down by one, 27-26, just inside the 40. Really feel like you got to pick up this first down here, so you feel like this is four down territory, but you do have two timeouts left. And Santa Fe is going to stop the clock with a, another person down. Caius Henry again. They got two players down. <clears throat> Henry and number seven, Jason Wilson. So that'll help the Trojans here. They'll have some time to talk about what, they, uh, what they're wanting to do here. And while they do that, we'll do this. <laughs> Brought to you by Matt McCoy Insurance at 81st and 129th East Avenue. For numbers that you need, 615-6634. Muskogee beats Enid 49-27. Deer Creek leading at Edmond North 1914. Moore, how about this coach? The Lions 31, Edmond Memorial 28 in the fourth quarter. And of course last night Union at Westmore. Red Hawks won 49-7 and Bigsby... Shows you why they are number one still, 42-16 at TU last night over Owasso. That's where we'll be next week in Owasso for a 7.30 kickoff. Jinx and Owasso are the only two schools, uh, at least in 6A1, on this side of the state that I'm aware of, that kickoff at 7.30. Everybody else at 7. Here's a score from Sand Springs, the Highway 97 rivalry, one of the oldest rivalries in Oklahoma history. Sapalpa leading at Sand Springs, 46-43 in the, uh, that says the third quarter. Dell City has come from behind to uh, lead Choctaw, 35-24, 34-25. Guthrie all over Ponca City tonight, 40 to nothing. You know, guys, we've, we're not surprised at all that we're seeing so many players cramped tonight in conditions like these with the humidity the way it is and uh, what they've been going through in practices as, as well. But I, I guess what's striking me is, is kind of the severity of these cramps. A lot of times if you see a guy cramping, it's, okay, limp off the field or the trainers come out, they do a little bit of stretching and the guy's able to get off the field. We've seen guys down for several minutes tonight on both sides of the ball, and, and this is... I mean, it's tough to watch. It's tough to watch. Yeah. Anybody who's, who's been through that knows how bad that hurts, and um, you feel for these guys right now. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll say it's it's been more Santa Fe players than Trojans, um, you know, for the most part, but Santa Fe has found, has found a way to continue to battle and scrap. Minute 48 remaining. Trojans have third and two at the Santa Fe 37-yard line. Straight, hand, or straight snap to the quarterback. Gilkey powers his way, burrows his way down to the 30-yard line. First down. The Trojans have a minute 38 with which to work. And 30 yards out, down one. It's another Trojan. First down. Owen Jones is coming in. McAnell is coming in. 56 yards on 11 carries for Gilkey. 
So Owen Jones now at quarterback. Connor Thompson to the left. Blake Bilby to the left. Only two receivers. Kai Beatty tight in on the right. I believe that's Corwin tight in on the left. Handoff. Michael Wilson gets a hole. Gets to the left side. Gets to the 25-yard line. Five-yard pickup. The, the clock's melting toward a minute. Trojans have two timeouts remaining. They'll burn one here. Tackle by Jalen Battle. You got to think right here. Um, you know they're they're within field goal range for what we've seen so far tonight. And again, the, the way it looks like from the end zone flags is there's a breeze. Rob, you can confirm that it's probably still not feeling that way down on the turf. Yeah, if you look at the flags around the home side of the stadium, it, it looks like there's some breeze. If you look at the American flag and the Oklahoma flag in that corner of the stadium, but here inside the stadium, the flags on top of the goalposts, I mean, just barely moving. So not really much breeze to speak of here on the field. Certainly nothing you can feel kind of being blocked in as we are here. Of course, last year with your, you know, your kicker that went to college and going to do some things. He had a lot of experience, a lot of faith in him. Right. He ended up kicking one that was a school record and, you know, just haven't crossed that, that many bridges with the kicker that you got, but he's done a good job tonight. So, but you've got a new snapper. You've got a holder that has experience. Right. You've got a new kicker. Um, so you really hope it doesn't come down to having to, to kick one, but you've got one timeout if you need to stop the clock to get them on the field. Second and five, minute two remaining. Will they continue to run the ball or look for A.C. Christensen? Back to passes Jones. He looks for Christensen. He throws, and the ball is bad incomplete. Jones' arm got hit as he threw it, and Santa Fe had a chance to wrap it up and drop the interception at the 10 yard line. Yeah, McAnally was wide open, um, but unfortunately the backside defensive lineman came around and just got a hand on Owen Jones' arm when he let go of the ball. And it went right into the hands of uh, Anderson, who's gone down a couple of times for cramp and he's cramped up again. He's gonna go back down on the turf, but hit Anderson right in the hands and he's gonna feel badly he didn't seal the deal and finish that one because that's one that he would normally make for sure but the trojans have some more life so fortunate to live the third down mm -hmm. trojans guys i think it was uh, i think it was 11 ronnell slaughter the defensive back who had that one kind of right in his kitchen there he's he's played a good game tonight back there for the wolves and you know, 57 seconds is a long time. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen in this game, but Slaughter might be seeing that one in his dreams tonight. Trojan football brought to you by Yale Cleaners, Tulsa's premier dry cleaning service. 11 locations, open weekdays 7 to 7 and tomorrow 8 to 5. Look at the 6A rankings by the Tulsa World. Bixby is number one, Union two, Owasso three, Jinx four, Mustang five. BA 6, Santa Fe 7. Ranked 8th is Norman North. Westmore's ranked ninth. They got throttled by Union last night. Norman's ranked 10th. So six of the eight top-ranked teams in 6A Division I in Jinx District, including the Trojans. That's some, that's some pretty good competition coming up for the 2023 season. And Santa Fe, again, has been... No slouch in the 14th meeting between the two schools. Even though Jinx has won 12 of 13, Santa Fe came up here and won in 2019. And they're clinging to a one-point lead, 27-26, with 57 seconds remaining. Third and five now at the Santa Fe 25. Santa Fe calls and timeout because they got 12 guys on the field. Santa Fe. Hmm. Santa Fe had All 12 right. guys on the field, so they had to call timeout. How about a historic broadcast for the debut of Trojan TV? Don? How about that? Let's do it. I'll take six. Boy, I'm trying to think the last time the Trojans had to kick a fourth quarter field goal to win a game here. It's been a while. Stephen Woodward comes to mind against Springdale way back in 2003. That's 20 years ago, but... I'm sure there's been one since then. 
Bryce Hall's brother Matt had one in a triple overtime game against Booker T. Washington. I think he kicked one in the fourth quarter to send it to overtime and then might have kicked another one in the second overtime to look that one up. Well, I'll go way back in the day Please. For, for, for somebody that was cramping up and had to perform uh, Josh Fiddler yeah. in the Indian Bowl yes. in, uh, against Muskogee in 1996. I think it was 38-35 triple overtime game. Yep. And Fiddler had to score the touchdown, and then he had to put his shoe back on so he could kick, that, kick the <laughs> extra point or the field goal to win the game. That was the, You guys were down 21 to nothing, if I remember right, in that game, or at least down 21 points. Yeah. Third and five, swing pass out, caught, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Trojans! Rob, I don't see any flags, do you? This guy on the sideline saying something, I don't, I don't have an official, they're talking about something. Samaj Stanford from 25 yards out, if it stands, they are talking about it. Still no signal. Jinx coaches with their hands on their hips. What's the call, Michael Griffin? Holding oh my Trojans. Gosh. My goodness. Wow. So it must have happened on the edge there, Rob. I guess it's the spot of the foul, so right around the five-yard line. Touchdown. You don't get the touchdown, but it is a first down. It does move the chain, so you got a first down inside the 20. So they call a hold on the on the receiver down there on the edge. So Samaj Stanford, second touchdown of the night that's been called back in this fourth quarter. Now just hang on to the football here. The ball is at the 19-yard line. Well, an empty backfield for Owen Jones. This is interesting. And now timeout called by Santa Fe. They'll burn their last timeout. Santa Fe called timeout because there was nobody lined up on AC Christensen. They moved up to an empty, empty backfield. Everybody out in, 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 in uh, a wide receiver formation and nobody was lined up over AC. Look and see if Kai Beatty's in the game. I kind of think they're going to go to number 33 as they did in the Bigsby season finale a year ago when he raced down the middle for a touchdown on a big pass play. By the way, the Jinx quarterback from a year ago, Ike Owens, playing at Drake, and Ian Corwin, the former Jinx quarterback, who had been at Drake at quarterback, I think with an elbow injury, they moved him to receiver. Yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah. Saw a picture of them that Ike's dad sent uh, of them walking off yep. the field to practice yep. on the first day together. Very cool. We'll keep you updated as the season rolls along for the different Jinx players. As you mentioned, Jack Stanley joining Noah Hernandez at Pitt State. Well, here we go. It is a first down at the 19-yard line with 49 seconds left and, again, an empty backfield. Stanford, they fake to him. Jones gets rid of it and overthrows it. Owen Jones has just had a tough night. Um, and gets almost gets sacked here from Kaiser. Well, again, he's 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 trying to hold the ball he to is, them yeah. to, to get open, and he knows he's going to take a shot. So you got to give him kudos for that toughness. But he just doesn't have time to throw to follow through on his throw because he's taking a shot at the last minute. So just need an extra half a second of protection, and that one would have turned out differently. I think. Well, now they put Stanford in the backfield with Owen Jones. Second and ten. Now Sanford, Stanford out of the backfield. They look for him. Now they look over the middle. Jones is in trouble. He can't get sacked. He somehow escapes. Needs to run out of bounds and does back at the line of scrimmage. Wow, that was an athletic play. A gutsy play by number 12, Owen Jones. Tackled by number one, Kaiser. Kaiser chases him out of bounds. <laughs> what a game. Have we reached 11 o'clock yet? Another typical Trojan game that goes over three hours. Well, there's a lot of hands on. And now we got uh, AC Christensen down here cramping, guys. That is not good. 
Boy, this last couple of minutes is <laughs> feels like it's taken about two hours. Right. But the amount of timeouts and the cramps and the stoppages and. <laughs> Thanks to the Jinx Football Booster Club, Chris Newor is the president this year. Stephen Bilby, the vice president. Byron Corwin is, again, the uh, treasurer. Marcy Corwin is the mom's president. Amy Kalmus, the membership drive. Libby Newor taking care of the locker room decorations. A lot of people in the Booster Club making Trojan football what it is. Trojan fans have gotten their money's worth tonight, haven't they? Down 27-26. Trojans at one time led 26-20 for their only lead of the game. Well, and have, have had chances. Have gotten, mm -hmm. you know, guys in the end zone, but uh, unfortunately gotten called back for penalties. And some of those are just hustle penalties. Right. And effort penalties. I mean, you're trying to make something happen for, for one of your teammates and you, you just reach out and hold on a little bit or reach out and grab somebody and – so it's, it's not a lack of effort. This, these guys aren't not trying. It's not uh, laziness or anything like that that they're, you know, getting holding penalties on. It's, it's really just trying to give great effort and, and help your teammate out, but just doing it in a way that actually costs you. Trojans have had, again, had two touchdowns called back in this game. Stanford in this fourth quarter. Stanford had a 28-yard TD run called back on a holding penalty. And then just had a 25-yard touchdown pass catch and run by Stanford, a freshman, Jalen Stanford's younger brother, Samaj Stanford. So the Trojans down one, face third and nine at third and nine at the Santa Fe 18-yard line with 34 seconds remaining, and the Trojans still have one timeout remaining. And A.C. Christensen has to come off. That's a huge blow to the Trojans because he's their best receiver and at 6-2 has done a great job in the summer league of taking defenders over the middle and able to use that 6-2 height to his advantage. But he's out of the game. Yeah, you just can't, whatever you do, you can't take a sack right here. You're going to you're gonna have a timeout to be able to get your extra, your field goal team on there. But you got to think possibly that you're going to run the ball maybe to the left to get it to the middle of the field and give your kicker a chance to win the game. Tight ends to the right. McAnally and Beatty. Here's a swing pass to Stanford. Needs a block. Gets to the outside to the 10. To the 5. Out of bounds. Did he get out of bounds? They call it's him a out first of and goal. Yep. It's a first and goal from the 4-yard line. 14-yard gain first down. Yeah, I'm sorry, Don. I'm just saying that's not a bad bad thing at all right there because you got a swing pass. You know that uh, Samaj has done good things out in the open. So, Rob, where's the ball at? At the four. And Trojans call their final timeout. the four-yard line. So, between the four and five-yard line, maybe about half a length of the football from the four. So. Wow. Well, you're certainly close enough now to try a field goal, but do you run it to the right, get it to the middle of the field, and then clock it, throw an incomplete pass to stop the clock and set up the field goal? Do you try to score six here? Man, a yeah, lot of options here right I, now. I, I don't, I don't think they call timeout unless they're trying to score six. So I, I, I think they're going to try to get in the end zone. And if they don't get up, get it, they line up and they clock it. That's, that's my we, guess is what the talking point is right now. Yeah, and we had Michael Wilson in this fourth quarter in the second half come up with some big runs, but we haven't seen him in the game in this uh, last couple of possessions. And, Rob, I don't know if you've noticed Coach Adam Gaylor, the defensive coordinator, he has run a marathon <laughs> in the past 10 minutes because he is pacing the sidelines knowing there's not anything he can do other than support his colleagues and keep his kids in the game. But it is completely out of the defensive hands right now. Offensive coordinators Greg Calabrese, former Trojan himself, Justin Glenn, the offensive line coach. New coaches this year, Tyler Bacon. Jordan Brown, Lane Martin, and Jordan Harding. Here we go. Stanford in the backfield. Two fullbacks, Beattie and McAnally to the right. Jones under center, Corwin at fullback. 
Corwin in motion. Toss sweep, Stanford. Can he get outside? Look out, he can't get dropped. He does. He gets dropped at the eight yard line. 17 seconds, 15 seconds. They gotta come up and clock it. 10 seconds and there's the clock. So they, they spiked the ball, stopped the clock with 10 seconds. And Timothy Foreman is going to come out and try for his third field goal of the night. The 5'9", 157-pound junior probably went to sleep last night <laughs> dreaming of this opportunity to have a game-winning kick. He's kicked field goals tonight from 39 and 30 yards. This is not a straightaway kick, though. It's a slight angle to the right. They'll spot it at the 16. To win the game, possibly, with 10 seconds left. Tough snap, and it's blocked. And that'll do it for Santa Fe. Unless it's picked up here by Christensen. And on the last play, Christensen's knocked out of bounds, and Santa Fe has prevailed. What a win for Edmund Santa Fe. One and nine a year ago. They have come back to Jinx again and beaten the Trojans as they did in 2019. What a uh, tough snap. loss. That snap was just a little bit low. Aiden Christensen did well to pick it off the turf and try to get it set, but maybe just that split second delay that it took to lift that ball off the turf was enough for the rush to get home and just a tough way for this one to end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Santa Fe has really been back there on almost all of them tonight. In fact, there's one time that they're their defender kind of ran past the kick or could have blocked it, but uh, they've, they've been pretty close to blocking a lot of them tonight. But, uh, you know, kudos to these, these guys that never quit. They kept on fighting. They kept on battling. A lot of guys had to come in tonight that probably were not anticipating having to step up tonight. So proud of this effort, but uh, obviously people disappointed about the results. Final score, Santa Fe 27, Jinx 26. We'll come back and hear from the head coach when we continue for the Riverside Ford postgame.